What is up, everyone? And welcome to the Wan Show. Happy wow. New Year. Yeah. It's a new year. Same me. A whole new year. Yep. It's a whole different number um, yep. in the date. No new, no new year resolutions. Wow. Not None. even 16K? <laughs> Good joke. Good job, Linus. X can't afford Mr. Beast. Uh, Mr. Beast and Elon Musk went back... Hmm. I don't know if there was much forth, but they definitely discussed <laughs> the issue on tw X, Twitter. What was the X was formerly X Twitter, X Twitter. That's what, hey, that actually works. Yeah. Does anyone else call it X Twitter? No, but I kind of like it. Cool. Um, so we'll be talking about that as well as just sort of creator monetization and why it is such a challenge for platforms like X Twitter to afford a creator like Mr. Beast. Um, the manufacturer sabotaged Polish trains with DRM. So we'll be talking a little bit about that. What else we got? Did I manage to pick your two? Uh, you got one of them. Yes. I'm, I'm now looking for a replacement and Success. also trying to find the one that... Oh, yeah. International hackers hit uh, water supply infrastructure. Scary. Anytime yeah. anyone hits infrastructure, it's kind of like, oh. Everyone kind of realizes that that can happen again for the however manyth time. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then we oh, forget. yeah, that thing. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's why the nuclear football uses like floppy disks or whatever it does. That's it. You got one. I what, about, what about the drug dealers and the drones? <laughs> it's like a year old article. I guess there's there's follow up information that's more new. So yeah, drug uh, drug dealers are using uh, they're using drones uh, because they'll use anything. Uh, the last thing I saw was avocados. Um, Cool. I know they've put them in submarines. This week before CES is historically a super, super slow week for news because everyone is saving everything for next week. But everyone's saving everything. Everyone's on vacation. We can talk through some leaks and stuff. It'll be fun. It'll still be a good show. You guys don't even watch this for the news. Why? Who cares? <laughs> Show is brought to you today by Manscaped, Squarespace, and The Ridge. Why don't we jump into our first topic today, which is a pretty small topic, all things considered. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Beast recently had a random crypto enthusiast respond to him promoting a video on Twitter um, that he should, hey, you know, Mr. Beast, Jimmy, why don't you upload the video directly to the platform instead of just posting a link to where people can go watch the video, which historically does not perform very well compared to an organic tweet. Now, obviously, it's Mr. Beast. So his video, uh, his post is just, I uploaded, go watch or I'll drop kick you. And it has 66,000 likes. Yeah. But for him, that is not a ton of engagement. That's, that's, you know, on the lower side. So that's been the case for a long time. Just, you know... Simple, short, self-promotional tweets don't perform as well as when you try and come up with something really engaging and really unique that you know serves the Twitter audience really well. Um, so it's a, it's a really valid question. Why not just upload the content here and people can just watch it? Um, and Jimmy responded saying, okay, hold on. First, Elon Musk pitched in. He goes, yeah. 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 10,000 likes. 10,000 likes. And so Jimmy responded with, uh, I think, a, a really actually um, succinct version of what I'll kind of try and talk to you guys about. And, and fair. He basically goes, my videos cost millions to make, and even if they got a billion views on X, it wouldn't fund a fraction of it. Um, colon forward slash face. Um, I'm down to test stuff once monetization is really cranking. And this is a really good point that I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand about platforms. I've been asked a thousand times about at least multiple dozens of alternate platforms. Linus, why don't you upload your videos here? I was about to say 2x as a <laughs> As a just a, a variable, variable. <laughs> that doesn't work. Okay, uh, Linus, why don't you upload your videos to 
Data. Daily Motion, <laughs> except we did. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you upload your videos to Daily Motion? Why don't you upload them to you know Rumble or Odyssey or any of the any of the countless There's alternate yeah. video platforms? And the answer is always, guys. The economics of it just don't make any sense because it it can only be one of two ways, right? You've either got the ability to get a lot of views with a very very low per view monetization rate. That's YouTube. Or you've got the ability to get very few views with a very high monetization rate. So that's going to be something more along the lines of like a, um, uh, what's that? Not masterclass, but the one where where it's like it pays out based on how many views you get. I can't, I can't remember. But, you know, something like like selling a course or something like that. That's just about the highest possible CPM you can get because each individual who buys the course is going to pay 10 or 20 or $50 or $100 or whatever the case may be. So there's your spectrum. And the problem is that unless your name is Google and you happen to own YouTube, at least this is true in the Western world, the economics of anything that's not paying like this getting less than hundreds of thousands or millions of views just doesn't make any sense. Um, Floatplane sits kind of somewhere in between where people pay anywhere from the OGs, uh, pay $3 a month, anywhere up to, I think our highest tier is $10 a month. And even then, you know, we have to put a ton of work into making that platform appealing to people. We have to upload a bunch of extra content. So it ends up being kind of a mix. It ends up being our regular content at a much higher monetization rate, but then it ends up being this other much higher cost content at a, or I shouldn't say higher cost, it's lower cost, but it's not going to other platforms that also contribute to it. So Floatplane has to bear that cost completely on its own. So we have this other sort of exclusive or behind the scenes or whatever else it is content that sits on there that is paid for by those subscribers. So that kind of sits somewhere in between. So there's kind of your spectrum. And the reality of it is that Twitter, X Twitter's monetization is just not even close I, even if you're if you're a person sitting in front of your webcam, I am not sure if even at you know let's let's forget about Mr. Beast because there's only one person. If we do the math based on Mr. Beast, there's only one person to whom that's relevant. Yeah, and his name is Jimmy. Um, whereas if we talk about it, maybe more along the lines of let's say someone who would have a quarter million to a million subscribers on YouTube. Okay, so you're someone who's getting, realistically, it's probably somewhere between 10, 15,000 views a video to, you know, maybe 250,000 views a video, somewhere in that range. Even if you could port your entire YouTube audience over to X Twitter, you'd be looking at maybe tens of dollars for that video, which, if it's just you and a webcam, may actually be viable. But if it's anything beyond that, you're, you're probably paying yourself less than minimum wage. And you might say, okay, well, are you really though? Because it's just purely incremental, right? Like, why not just have the little X cherry on top of all your views on YouTube or whatever else? But you got to understand from a creator's point of view, at least if you're a, a business minded one, there's an opportunity cost yeah. for everyone who watches on this platform where the monetization is very low. Anywhere you're uploading, you're theoretically trying to drive more people there. So, like, if it's worse, why are you driving people there? Especially when most of the people looking for videos are probably going to be on YouTube anyways. When you're looking for publicly, freely accessible videos. So, people often ask themselves, or, or ask out loud even, you know, why is it that YouTube has this seeming monopoly on VOD content. And there's a lot of answers for how it came to be the way that it is right now. But as for why it is the way it is right now, you know, why are why do Twitch streamers wanna get a foothold on YouTube? Why do TikTokers wanna make a transition over to YouTube? The answer is simple and it's that people like to be paid for their work and YouTube offers by far the best compensation for their work. And that's not, it's not just like, oh, it's, it's all about the money. It's like, think about it this way. If in the morning you got dressed, brushed your teeth, 
ate some oatmeal, and you had the option to go to one of six different places, and one of them paid the most, and you did the exact same job, and your job wasn't, you know, to manufacture, um, you know, the train that runs over people, or, you know, the lever that doesn't seem to work to prevent the train from running over people, or, you know, whatever the case may be. As long as what you're doing is not, you know, obviously morally abhorrent. Yeah. Well, which one do you drive to? I, I think it's a pretty obvious answer. You go to the one that compensates you best. And YouTube has this, for better or for worse, very powerful machine that ensures that if you are able to get views on the platform, you are able to be paid. Luke's calling someone. Yeah, don't worry about it. Well, this is very interesting. I know. I would I would love to know who we're going to be talking to live on the show today. Are we planning to tell them they're live on the show? We're not talking to anybody live on the show. We are not talking to anybody. We're not talking to them. Okay. Yeah. Wh wow. This is very mysterious. <laughs> Anyway, um, we, ha we actually do have monetization enabled on X Twitter, and I thought I would just share with you guys. Uh, we don't upload a ton of video, but we have uploaded some videos that have gotten, you know, thousands of views or whatever. Typically, uh, man, I'm trying to think. I actually don't know what a thousand views is worth on YouTube. It really, it varies a lot. But the, the point is, uh, we have a pretty active Twitter account, fair amount of engagement, and this should give you some idea of why people don't really, um, why someone like Jimmy might not bother. So here's all of our, all of our payouts uh, for the last, I guess, you know, three months or whatever. Um, anywhere from... You know, 60, 60, oh, this, I mean, this could be 65 anything. Oh, 65.99. Okay, I don't know. It could have been, there could have been another, there could have been another digit in there or something like that. Um, let's say for the sake of argument, how, how many typical views does Jimmy get on a video? 50 million to 100 million? Is that a pretty fair range? Why don't we say 100 that million? sounds fair. I don't really look at them, but that sounds about right. So let's say Jimmy is... 100 times our size let's say we get 1 million let's take the let's take kind of an, a, a mid to upper range for him let's take a lower range for us we typically get a million to two million so let's say we get a million views of video and let's say he gets a hundred million views of video he's a hundred times our size he would make let's say for the sake of argument did you say 50 to 100 yeah none of his get 50 oh okay Is he, so he's way above that now yeah okay i haven't looked in a while yeah usually it's yeah. like like 80 to 200 is where I'm seeing most of them. Okay, so let's say 150. So let's sure. say, okay, let's say he's 150 times our size. So he would get around 10 grand from Twitter, assuming he had a similar strategy to us, you know, trying to kind of post every day and meme or, you know, whatever else. That is, I mean, the, that is not even a, a, a rounding error um, for him. Like, I, I just, it, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't register. He could he could literally make an offhand comment about man. I'm trying to think of something totally totally trivial. Like like he could he could do a special edition popsicle stick with like Mr. Beast on it, and that, that's it's nothing else. It's a popsicle stick. It sounds like a uh, what was it? it sounds like a supreme drop. Yeah, and then he could make a tweet about the popsicle stick. And it would eclipse his Twitter revenue that he actually makes organically from the platform. Like it's yeah. just, it's just not a factor for someone like that. Um, so that's, that's, that's why I just don't think that as much as people want to see it, you're going to see this mass exodus from YouTube anytime soon or ever such a, ever such a big word, but I just don't see anyone else even really trying like Bite dance, TikTok maybe had an opportunity, but they haven't managed to figure out either the monetization of the platform itself, or they haven't figured out how to share in a way that is enticing to creators. Like you still have people trying to migrate, trying to migrate their audiences. What do you want to talk about next? How about the AI key? It, oh yeah, oh, Windows man. machines at Microsoft's behest are getting a new key on the keyboard for what is this? The first time since the Windows key was added in 1994. Yeah. 
It's Come being on, added Luke, tell to, us about it. Yeah, you must love this. Being, it's great. It's, AI key. I think it could Look make sense he is. eventually. Okay, let's let's hear it. I don't think it. it makes a lot of sense now. Basically, it's a key that opens up um, whatever they call it, Windows Copilot, um, which if you end up using Windows Copilot in a very similar way that you would use Windows Search, then I think it kind of makes sense. Mm, mm -hmm. Right now, that's super obviously not worth doing. So maybe it's a little premature. Maybe I was telling Dan before you. the show, this feels kind of like when Facebook renamed to Meta. It feels like they're investing an immense amount of money, not really getting the product that they want, and then doing something that feels more like a marketing push than anything else mm. to try to stir more news and more push around it because they still want this thing that they've sunk billions of dollars into to be more relevant than it is. Um, the AI space is moving fast and very exciting, but is hurting on actual products that are usable by users. Um, I, I pointed this out a really long time ago. It was going to be hard for people to actually ship. Um, and a lot of things that people have wanted from the AI space have had issues shipping, um, including Copilot. So, yeah, it feels premature to me. I think one day I will probably actually like this. But something that they would need to do is change Windows search back to actually searching your computer instead of being this like weird internet thing. Because then if they had one button that was like, this is local, and they had another button that was like, this is AI stuff, and it can search the yeah. uh, the internet, and it can give me links, and it can do whatever, that would actually be probably useful. I think one thing that's fairly telling is it's on the right side of the keyboard, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the area no one uses. Uh, here, we actually it's have... some uh, of the least cast pressed we, keys on We actually keyboard. have a, a Bigfoot sighting style picture. Yeah, uh, there's better ones. Yeah, no, no, just go on Tom's Hardware, which is the source of this. This is intentionally terrible. Uh, so just go oh, on Tom's Hardware, okay. look at it yourself. You know, we're not trying to, you're not trying to take their clicks or whatever. But I think it's this one. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's to the left of the Windows key. Yeah. Um... Yeah. I, I actually, so. I, speaking of speaking of ridiculous things that Microsoft has embedded in their operating system to push their other stuff, like we are we are getting super we are getting super close to antitrust Microsoft time again here. I think um, I was uh. not aware of this. Did you know that there is a dedicated Windows shortcut key or a, a dedicated Windows shortcut to open up LinkedIn? Oh, uh, that's what I was going to troll you with. Oh, okay. Yeah, someone the, posted it in chat. There's a lot more than just that, actually. There's like, um... yeah. So check check this out. Check this out, guys. Uh, we're going to Linus laptop. Okay, hold on, hold on. No, no. Wait, we can look at Control Alt Shift Win L. Opens LinkedIn. Opens LinkedIn. Like, there's also really? key combinations for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Teams, OneDrive, OneNote, and Teams. You don't need a you don't need a shortcut for Teams. It'll you need a anyways. shortcut to make Teams go away. Yeah. yeah man, if the, I don't annoying. know if there's anything that makes me more angry. What about when it forcibly logs you out and then you can't even minimize it because it keeps forcing its thing up? Yeah. Yeah. That. So you're like working on something important and it, it logs you out randomly in the background and you have to go through its entire login process or it'll, or else it'll force itself to the front of screen. It is. Amazing. Remarkable how bad that design is. I also just don't really understand why it logs me out. We've mm. we've looked into it. You can't configure it to not do that. Mm -hmm. It'll log me out while I'm literally in the middle of using it. I I was on a Teams call today, hung up, and then it logged me out. I find I, like, I find the approach that some services take to security very confusing. Like if you're going to make the argument that I should be signed out every month because something, then fine. Okay, well, do it on my phone and on my laptop and on my desktop. But then you have something like uh, Gmail, for example, which logs you out. I'm, I'm trying to think. Man, it says every month, but I swear my work computer is way more often than that there's no way that that only comes up 12 times a year but on your phone never logs you out and you could kind of go okay well yeah but you've got you know biometric authentication on your phone or whatever but i'm sitting here going well yeah but i have biometric authentication on my computer which one's more likely to get stolen Just check, yeah which one's more likely to get left in a coffee shop <laughs> yeah. 
at least have some consistency to this. And there's no consistency between the various tech giants. I mean, okay, WhatsApp is a great example. For years, Facebook would allow you to leave WhatsApp signed in perpetually on your phone but wouldn't allow you to have it signed in or cloud synchronized with any other phone. Now they do that and just, you know, I don't know, why'd you change that? I don't know, not sure. Uh, but on the computer would log you out like all the time. Like I think it would stay logged at seven, 14 days or something like that. And then meanwhile, you've got something like Teams that logs you out on your phone all the time instead of just being like, oh yeah, no, no, the phone is the single source of truth that you know you can use to authenticate your other devices. And then, you know, Google's really funny because they'll sign you, I'm trying to think of what, no, they don't sign you out of anything on your phone, but they are constantly signing you out on your computer. And then I'm trying to think if there's anyone that doesn't, that never signs you out on your computer. Um, can't, think of, can't think of anything Steam. right now. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's one. And it's, it's like gaming stuff. No, no, I can't think of any productivity, like work productivity style apps that don't log you out. High value accounts though. Steam, like the, the value of my steam account compared to oh, yeah. like my stupid throwaway hotmail account or something, <laughs> which by the way, no hotmail, you can tell to never sign you out. Oh, well, your cause your windows account is, uh, is tied to your computer, right? Or your, your, uh, your windows live. Account. So yeah. it's like, it's, it's flipping arbitrary. So on my computer, if it's my Microsoft account that I use to log in for authentication, I can stay signed in perpetually. But on my phone, where it's, tra where it's managed by my organization, and if there was ever a problem, we can just recover it, no problem. You have to sign me out every 30 days. Like it, the whole thing is completely arbitrary. <laughs> Nobody agrees. Yeah. Ah! You want to hear an interesting one? Yeah. Recommended by password managers people are starting to store their 2FA in their password managers. And there are security arguments for this. No. From That's not what to do. Password managers what? and security researchers. What? Yeah. Hold, okay, you're going to have to... Okay, back, back me up. So people... Oh, hold on. A big, people are storing their 2FA backup codes yeah. in their password manager. Yeah. But now we're back to just one password again. And that was a pun. Yeah. It's not a pun, but it's a it's One funny. One password actually does recommend this. No. <laughs> a, a, a like surprising amount of other people do this too. It's interesting to me. The uh, one of the big arguments for it is there's just no point in not because if they have this, they have that. And I was like, "Hmm." A kind of interesting argument because like if if someone gets into your password manager do they really not also have your 2fa uh they might just have the one 2fa i mean one of the ways that people commonly get past 2fas is by spamming login attempts and then like calling you in the middle of the night and you know trying to get it or whatever else like while you're groggy and stuff like they could social engineer one 2fa away from you without having access to your 2FA account. So what no, I what actually... The, what they're saying is if they, if they had the... If they had access to your password vault... Yeah. They may as well just have access to your 2FA. But they don't because I don't store that password in my password vault. Your password for your 2FA? Yeah, I have it memorized. Yeah. See, this is why I don't like it. But this is like actually an argument that's being made by like smart people. Which I find very interesting. Uh, Sore two F A in. Let's see. Now I'm sad. They even tell you when they give you the backup codes. They're like, write this down, print it out. That's what you're supposed to do. Backup codes are not. Those are different things. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying that people were putting the backup codes. Well, in some people do manager. that too, but that's that's not. I don't think that in particular is recommended. Just the two F A. So you can you can have like rolling two F A. But then the password for it is in your password manager? That's so stupid. Yeah. Like you can literally have it to the point where when you when you go like, oh, fill my login info for this site, it'll fill the login and password. No. And then when the 2FA no. comes up, it'll just automatically no. fill the 2FA and then you're fully logged no. in. No, I, I hate the tedium of 2FAing as much as probably anyone. I and kind of, one of the reasons why I'm bringing this up is yeah. I want people to like 
yell at me about why it's fine because I don't really get it because it doesn't seem fine to me. No, it's not fine. Yeah. I strongly disagree. Yeah, no, no, uh, poll? We really have to poll this, you guys? I, no. I, oh, yeah, fine, I'll do, I'll do a poll. Uh, safe to store 2FA password in your password manager. So is that, is that what we're asking? Uh, sure, yeah. Okay. I, hmm. uh, guys, I don't know, man. Okay, let's, let's bring up the results. Results time. Yeah, no, there's like 10%. Fi- oh, 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 it's swinging. It's swinging. The people who were very angry about this were super quick to click no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shoot. It's, uh, oh, it's, it's covered a little bit. Is it broken? There you go. <laughs> Got that fixed for you. So it looks like Good. by the time the dust settles, anywhere between a quarter of you, probably about a quarter of you, think that it's totally fine to store your 2FAs in there. It's definitely more convenient. It's... Definitely more convenient. Yeah. And I mean, if you gave me the option, you know, 10 years ago, when we were just getting into the idea of biometric security, if you gave me the option to have a setup like this, where I have to memorize one password that I just enter all the time, or if I have to start like entering my fingerprints and, you know, retinal scans and iris scans and facial scans into every electronic device in my life. I, I would I would probably have taken this path even with all the compromises. Here, check this out. Like this is this is where like man, like, I find this so interesting. Here's an article on blog.onepassword.com. Right. And there are other I'm just using them as an example. There are other password vault password storage password security sites that say the exact same thing i'm just using one password as an example because this is the first one that i found you've probably heard or read the advice turn on two-factor authentication everywhere it's offered after all it's a great way to add an extra layer of protection to your online accounts but should that include your one password account the short answer is no wait that's a completely different thing this is this is a different thing. Wait, what? They're saying not to turn on two-factor authentication also on no a password manager. You need to unpack what two FA does and how your data is protected by one password security model. This isn't the article that I meant to bring up, but it's what? like there's still there's okay, on, so many on. hot takes in the one password. Hold on, blog. Hold on, what? No, uh, sorry. I, I, I can can I? How is it secured by design? Okay, you're you're. You're scrolling Where really Where do you want fa- me to stop? I don't know. You keep just pointing. I, well, I know I what two-factor authentication is, so we can go past that. How is it secure by design? Okay. You choose this password. We don't know it, and it's never stored on our servers. Your secret key is long... So- yeah, but that's not... What the... Are they high? <laughs> that's not how... Lit... <laughs> what the fuck? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here that we go. is terrible advice. Here we go. Manages to obtain an encrypted copy of your data from our servers. That's not, that's not, that's such a, that's such an outlier scenario. That's not scenario one, that's scenario seven. A criminal guesses your account. That's, we're not talking about guessing from a new device without your secret key. That's only stored on your devices, so you don't have to type it every time you unlock one password and your printable emergency key. Wait, isn't that just a second factor then? Well, what they're saying is like, I, I think what they're saying is if you sign in a new location, you have to authenticate that new location. I think that's what they're saying. You wouldn't be able to sign into your account from a new device without your secret key. That piece of information. Is okay. Nice. So then hold on. One password is just saying they already have 2FA. I guess. This this isn't the page I yeah. bring up. I'm going to go okay, find it. Okay. All right. So that's that's fine then because they already have a second authentication factor. I mean, okay. I have uh, I have a remote access um, service that I use that I do not have, you know, two FA. Like I don't, I don't have it in Google Authenticator, right? Um, because every time I sign on from a new location, I have to validate via some other means. So I don't need that kind. Of, but, that's just really misleading. Because but also recommending against adding additional factors is interesting to me. Yeah, I do see their point that two factors is probably enough factors that you're going to get a notification that somebody's trying to Even sign in static. and you're going to get a chance to deal with it. Um, however, I, wish I, I, could find this article. I disagree that all factors are made equal. I don't think that that should be their default factor even. Um, like their default second factor, something that is static, a, 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 like a 
It's almost, it's almost like a, like a physical key. A physical key can be copied, whereas a key that changes every time you use the lock cannot be copied, and that's how something like Google Authenticator works. Oh. Hmm. I wish I could find it. I know they have an article on this. I found someone talking about the article, but all, I can't find the actual root article. All someone would have to do is have your computer compromised with a keylogger at a time when you are re-authenticating and they could force you to re-authenticate if they had some kind of access to your machine that allowed them to reroute you through a VPN or something. Because then it would appear as though you were logging in from another location. So I know I'm asking for a lot of stars to align, but that's not that far-fetched for someone to have some kind of... For someone to have... If they have some kind of malware on your machine i don't think it's that far-fetched that they could route you through some kind of um remote location and that they could have a key logger installed i don't i don't think that's like science fiction um this, so this re this reads different than the last time i saw it i don't know if it's been edited or maybe i'm remembering an article from someone else and just found this one first so my memory might be skewed but here's the article it was linked in in floodplain chat by a, a few different people um but yeah one password in 2fa is it wrong to store passwords and one-time codes together and to be clear again one password is not the only company that supports this they like all do i think i'm pretty sure LastPass does i know keeper does and clearly one password does and i think the other ones do as well um and yeah, they argue that it's like secure and fine. But they also say, you know, the correct choice is the one that works best for you. You apparently, okay, so this is apparently the um, the the one password um, key is only entered when you first set it up. Yeah. Okay, okay, well then that's not too bad because they'd have to have the key logger at the time you first set it up. Yeah. They might, though. Yeah, and you might... You could potentially trick a user into entering that. Um, man. It's not as bad as I thought it was. Not even close. But I'm, I'm not a huge fan. And I also don't really like the advice of, of not having... Okay, I should, I should clarify. When I say I don't like the advice of not adding multiple factors, I don't mean adding multiple alternate factors. I was dismayed when I realized that the way that Google accounts handle a, um, a physical device, like a YubiKey, if you don't have your YubiKey and you set up, uh, like when I, when I initially set it up, I was like, it was at a time when I think we had just had an account compromised or something like that. And I was going like, I want three factors. I want my password. I want my YubiKey. Oh, yeah. And I want my authenticator app. Some sites worked this way for a very brief period of time, and now I don't know of any that worked. And this what way. I didn't realize at the time was I was adding or factors. Some of them were and. Not and factors. Some were and. Google wasn't. <laughs> yeah. I don't know of anything that is now, like I just said. Yeah. But, but for a little brief period of time, when we, when we first got our YubiKeys, some sites were and, and that was actually very cool. Because uh, if you wanted like hyper security, it felt like you had the you know the the two nuclear keys or whatever. Um, but yeah, now it's just like various ways to bypass the thing. Um, I don't know. There's also I've found a lot of places that accept UB keys require two different ones. Yeah, which is like. So it's like, yes, I can use my high security YubiKey, and I also have to have SMS authentication enabled. That's cool. Like, the very worst sick. kind. Sick. Yeah. I don't know. Um, YubiKey has gotten, I find, with a lot of things that we use, it's gotten a little bit less useful over the years uh, because more and more places that do support it require you to have two enabled. And. Less and less places seem to support it. M4TZESS says, if a keylogger is on your system, you're already compromised. That's sort of true. Because in many cases, you are, well, the expectation, one of the reasons that you should use autofill with a password manager is that it makes it so you don't have to type your passwords. So if someone has a keylogger, even if they have, man, even if they've, they've got you good and they have, you know, remote access to your screen, um, unless they can also access your clipboard, um, 
yeah, man, even if they can access your clipboard, the autofill service, I don't believe copies the plain text of your password to the clipboard. So as long as you're not control C, control V, pasting your passwords, I, I'm sure there's a way, but it would be very difficult to get passwords, even if you had, even if they had your clipboard and even if they had a keylogger and even if they could see your screen, because almost every password field that I've seen in the last 10 years just uses asterisks or dots or whatever else instead of actually pasting the text in there. One password apparently clears the clipboard after a time delay. Uh, as far as I know, it just edits the HTML, doesn't copy your password. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Quinoj says, be careful seemingly giving security advice. Uh, I think what we're saying is fine. Yeah, what? We're saying that having more factors is good. And if they're strong factors, then that's better. Yeah, what, what I'm questioning is some people yeah. talking about how you can... My whole thing is I'm just very unsure about the idea of storing all of your two-factor in one application. The main argument I'm seeing around it is, in general, if someone is going to have access to this thing, they probably have access to your whole device. Um, and that device is usually described as a phone um, remote desktop plus autofill plus developer tools equals compromise without 2FA. Yeah, there's lots of different... Yeah, there's tons of different attack vectors. Yeah. Um, I just question the idea of reducing the layers because it feels like reducing the layers. And I understand some of the arguments. Like, okay, if they're literally in your phone, then they already have it anyways. It's like, well... I don't know. I don't know about that. Because like the things that I hear getting compromised more often these days are computers. And I never have my two-factor authentication stuff on my computer. I know some people do, but I don't. Like I never run How Authy. Do do some people run Authy in their browser. Really? Yeah. Oh. I don't do that. Okay. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. That just, I mean... Man, man, I'm trying to think. Is this is this like a is this like a subconscious bias, or does this have a basis in reality? I just kind of think. I've of, always wanted the separation. I think of Windows computers as just like kind of probably compromised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> am, I, yeah. Am I just buying into the Apple messaging? <laughs> like, I don't know. Well, uh, yeah. I do too. So I don't know. Like I, I don't want to be in a position where my computer is the sole portal to any account. But I mean, in some cases, you can't really avoid it. But I don't, I don't like it, and I, I do try to avoid it. Um, hmm. Chow Yi says uh, you should disable autofill in your password manager settings because they can autofill malicious password boxes. Manually paste it every time instead. I do that, to be clear. This is one of those but things But I disable where... autofill because I find keepers at least is oh, so I bad. Oh, I just find it doesn't work very well. That it, 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 it'll also just like aggressively take over certain things or it'll decide that the wrong box is the right one and it, will, it won't let me progress on the website because it keeps trying to spam into the wrong box, which is really bad. Oh yeah, okay. That's a that's a that's a that's a very interesting attack vector, um, <laughs> and security is just such a such a myth, man. <laughs> uh, either way, having a second factor definitely not a bad thing. Putting it all in one place, I'm just not sure if I can agree with that. I think that's really the bottom line for me. Um, SMS needs to completely not be a thing for, for 2FA. Yeah. Uh, do we want to move on to... What are we supposed to do? Oh, we're supposed to do... Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, people people have, I think, found the, uh, the new item on the store. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People found it before the show was even live. <laughs> That's right, my friends. Ludwig's Bidet, the Swipe and Swipe Plus, are now available on LTTstore.com. New year, new clean. In both elongated and round forms. Okay, so the Swipe Plus, 
it's not inexpensive, but uh, without giving you guys too much information, let me just say it, uh, you know, it gets pretty warm. You know, the, the water the water gets pretty warm, which is good. Um, it doesn't have RGB, but it does have some colors. Uh, some of the colors we're, we're, we, were, we were told are best to avoid, but we, we definitely do have some... Uh, some some nice different you know gamer colors that you can you can set your swipe plus to. Uh, we also have the regular swipe. Uh, let's see if I can find that. There it is. Much much more economical. This one is not heated and doesn't have you know the fan and the carbon you know odor filter and all those kinds of wild features and everything. It's just a, just a simple bidet. Why does Ludwig have a bidet? As far as I can tell. It really is as simple as he thinks that people's butts should be cleaner. Yeah. I, I actually, I, I can't, I, 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 I've, I really have, you know, checked his, I've talked to him about it. I've checked his just external communications about it. Um, I've, I, I, I've, I've tried to, to kind of analyze what his motivation could possibly be for creating a product like this. And why do you make a screwdriver? Because I just think why do you make a should, backpack? I think there should be a better screwdriver, and I why think do you there make should towels? be a better backpack. Why do you make a kids book? I why do you make kids toys? Because they, I think they're good. You, why are you making cable organizers? Because cable why do you make should a be organized. Extension? Because the screwdriver needs to be longer. It sounds like the bidet's valid. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I um, yeah, I checked his butthole. It's super clean. <laughs> <laughs> I was, just, I was just trying to get him. He's all, he's all focused on something else yeah, right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so now... The, the knowledge of Ludwig's clean butthole is definitely something I needed to So do. now you can get the swipe and the swipe plus on lttstore.com. Uh, this is, I think, the second non-LMG creator merch item that we've brought onto the store. The Man. Jerry the, Rig knife. The Jerry Rig everything knife has been a smash hit for us. And... Maybe this will be a um, splash a hit. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. So uh, someone asking uh, Brandon P. LMG is asking. Wait, can I merch request a bidet? I guess. Yeah. I mean, you. There you go. the The reality of it is that your your annual budget for stuff from LTT store is your annual budget. And the stuff that we buy from Ludwig versus the stuff that we buy from a supplier, like the, yeah. the, the it's not like the, the LMG stuff is there free. Is, there is, yeah, and, there is and cost so we, to you these know, things we could regardless. Just, yeah, so the cost is the cost is the cost and your budget is your budget is your budget. So I don't see why not. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. I, these are great. I've been using one for the i've had a swipe plus in my upstairs bathroom for six months or something like that it's i i would have considered one of these but i bought in too early before you started doing that because when there was the toilet paper shortages during the pandemic i was just like screw this man yeah and got a bidet yeah it i wasn't open to it until i traveled to japan yeah I was always like, oh, weird toilets. Uh -huh. <laughs> toilet paper makes so much sense. Toilet paper makes no, no sense. Toilet paper seems very, very archaic and out of date at this point. It really, it really feels like, like, sure to, you know, to dry off or whatever. Yeah. But like, what? Sorry, I'm taking this like whole wad of, um, <laughs> Casey Herp J1 on the float plane on float plane chat says not open to bidets very clenched <laughs> <laughs> okay I go ahead stay clenched but uh anyway the point is uh, what am I talking about yeah like why why am I like you know getting my hand all up in there and like this like this wimpy paper and the manufacturing it, you are literally manufacturing garbage when you make toilet paper, why are, why are we doing this? And like, okay, a little bit is, is fine, you know, so you're, you know, your butt's not all wet when you pull your underwear up or whatever, but like, it, it just seems spectacularly wasteful. And an, an affordable bidet, like the swipe at 50 bucks, will pay for itself. It will pay yeah. for itself. Yeah. The, 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 the $50 one, probably rather quickly, actually. Yeah. yeah. 
So I, I yeah, as soon as I as soon as I tried it in Japan, um, I, like man, the toilets they have over there, it's like it's like they're amazing. Yeah, it's it's like landing on an alien planet, and they yeah. just have figured out waste disposal in ways that humans could never have imagined. Like I, I've told this story on Wan Show before, but I, we pulled over at a rest stop on a highway, and the bathroom was so much nicer than anything I've seen in like, you know, a four star hotel in, you know, North America, like in a, in a hotel lobby or like a, you know, an up class restaurant, you know, I'm talking public washrooms, obviously. Right. Uh, it was just, everything was clean. The lighting was so bright and the toilet seat was heated. And this is like, like in a shack at the side of the road, essentially. I don't even think there was a convenience store. Like I, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. check teams. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, I don't know. I think for them too, it's like, it's it's got to be one of those things where I, I believe a lot of them are made there. Um, and it's so ubiquitous there that the pricing is probably not as bad. Like when I tried to get a bidet here, it was kind of rough. But the pricing also just makes sense because you just do it once. Yeah. And then it's just, you just don't buy toilet paper. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And over the span of your entire lifetime that you are alive, even a swipe plus will pay for itself. Yeah, because like for with, sure. with my understanding, um, they don't really break that often either. Well, they're pretty simple devices. Yeah. Uh, especially the, the basic one is like a valve and a dial. You're still paying for water? Yeah, we live somewhere where water is very cheap, but I believe basically everywhere that would still be a cheaper alternative than buying toilet paper. Yeah. I think. I, I, I find it hard to believe that a little bit of water uh, would cost more than the paper that you would use for that. Because yeah, it's, not, it's not like that much water. Now, obviously, this, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's like an example of somewhere where that's not the case. But I think yeah. most places that will be the case. Okay. Uh, so anyway, um, why don't we do a couple merch messages? Oh, right. Merch messages. How do they work? So instead of, you know, Twitch bits or Super Chats or whatever else, we have merch messages. That way, whether we do or don't get to your message, hey, you get your high-quality merchandise from lttstore.com in the mail uh, sometime after the show. So all you got to do is add the items that you're interested in to your cart, and then in the cart, you'll see a little box that'll have a place for you to fill in a merch message. That'll go to producer Dan. Boop, there he is. Now he's gone, and he will reply to you, or flag it for me and Luke to respond to, or send it to someone else internally who can answer you, or just pop it up on there if you have like a, hey mom, shout out, and your mom watches WAN Show, which is unusual, but not unheard of. Luke's mom watches WAN Show. Yeah. Hi. Hi, um, mom. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, why don't you show us a couple to kind of show us how it's done, Dan? Yeah, sure thing. First up here, what is the weirdest or most obscure reason you've had to delay or cancel a product? Or a project, sorry. Oh, man. Most of the reasons for us canceling projects usually come down to just them being fundamentally broken, like not not working at all. Um, I mean, oh man, I'm trying to think of something that we canceled recently. We uh, we didn't cancel, but we delayed a desk fan that is made out of e-waste hard drives recently. Um, and the reason for it was that the idea was that we would use the motor from the hard drive. Oh. And we're probably still going to do it at some point. But the issue was that if we just ran those motors with no particular protection. So the, so the first proof of concept, I basically told the engineer who showed it to me, or they, the person in the engineering department, I don't know if, strictly speaking, they were an engineer. That's a protected term in Canada, long story. Uh, I told the, 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 the Creator Warehouse engineering department person who worked on it uh, to immediately unplug it, uh, put a label on it that it was unsafe and that no one should turn it on under any circumstances, and uh, basically said, okay, so this is a much more complicated project um, let's see if we can figure out a way to make it set, make sense. It, it ended up sort of getting a pin put in it, but basically what they did was they took the motor, set it up with a little 3d printed thing, put a drone propeller blade on it. And I don't know if you guys are that familiar with, um, hard drive motors, but inside a hard drive, they spin at anywhere from real fast 5,400 RPM to yeah. 7,200 RPM. I don't know if you're familiar with 
drone propellers, but they can be pretty scary. Um, and that thing sitting on the desk, I'll tell you this, it moved air. <laughs> Not too surprised about that. <laughs> it, it moved some air. I was uh, I was I wonder, feeling cooled. I wonder how fast it was actually spinning. I'm uh, not sure. We could have because I, there's going to be a, there's got to be a lot more resistance than it normally has. I actually asked him to find out. You can put a piece of tape on one of the blades, and then you can just hold like a thing up to it, and it'll it'll count how mm -hmm. many per second. Uh, I, I don't know if anyone ever got back to me on that, but suffice to say, it was terrifying, and. Um, I was like, okay, well, we have a lot of work to do on, you know, controllers for this and building a safe propeller design. And, uh, wow, well, yeah, this is obviously a much bigger project you than just... just put a cage around it like most desktop fans? We could, but we'd have to design that cage and mm -hmm. we'd have to... Because the idea was we weren't really sure what that product was at the time. Is this something that we make and it's like bespoke and it's numbered and we do a hundred of them and it's done? Is it something that we make on an ongoing basis, but it's like kind of a boutique sort of handcrafted product. Is this something that we provide as a kit and we just kind of send out to you the, you know, the cage and propeller and the, and the arm, maybe we get it injection molded. So it's not just like, you know, 3d printed and, uh, and we basically validate different models of hard drives and you build it yourself. Like there's, there was a lot of different ideas for how we could bring it to market. And right now I think we just won't do anything for now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else you got with, for me, Dan? Happy New Year! In an alternative reality, what would LTT look like as a cable TV show in the 1990s? I didn't watch, like, G4 Neither Tech TV yeah, no. or, like, Steve Dotto's show. Or... I didn't have access to any of them, personally. Yeah, I don't think I... I hmm, I'm trying to think. In the 90s, did I, I don't think I... I don't think my family had a cable subscription, so I didn't really... Um, I didn't really get access to any of that, but... I would imagine we'd have kind of like a fun sort of colorful sidekick sort of character, like, like a, like a producer Dan type of type of person. Um, I would imagine that we'd probably have a lot of guests on, like that was kind of how everyone did things back then was you, you kind of had guests on to kind of show their, their wares. Um, uh, everything was so expensive, like on the production side like it would it would have to be in a studio mm -hmm. there's no way that you could just shoot stuff at home with any kind of decent quality in the 90s most of them as far as my understanding goes were just in like standard tv studios they would just have one of the sets so that they could reuse those crazy expensive cameras that they would use for basically everything news all the different various shows they would all be in one studio i'd imagine everything would be a lot more tutorially like even back at the beginning of NCIX Tech Tips, almost every video started with, okay, what's a tutorial we can do and what products do we need to feature in order to get this point across? You know, and back then, especially, there would be a lot of things to give tutorials on. Yeah. And computers were hard. Very few things that you could just sort of take for granted that everyone knows about and you're just sort of evaluating performance or whatever else. Like if I, if you did a GPU review in 1996, you would have to explain what a GPU is. You yeah. wouldn't just take for granted that people I know think, what FPS means. I think that's what some of them kind of were. Yeah. But it was like, what's a sound card and why could you possibly want one? And like, how would you go about installing one and picking one stuff like that? Some of them I've found, I didn't have access to any of them, uh, but some of them that I found on like YouTube many, many years later, are actually like kind of cool. I, I can think of one in particular that had this like kind of weird thin desk and the the host would sit on like the close side and the there was usually a guest would sit on the far side and the computer would kind of be in the middle and then it would be like this presentation piece i don't remember the name of the show um sounds fascinating it was good though good job i i described it because i'm hoping someone will recognize it and post it <laughs> <laughs> okay float play chat's super useful <laughs> love you float play chat <laughs> Um, all right, it's time for us to pick another topic. Luke, you want to pick one? Hold on. Yeah, they got it. <laughs> of course they did. Okay, are we going to your screen? I'm not there yet, but yeah, uh, we will be. Hilarious. Computer Chronicles. This old, this old house is awesome, D Bradley 771. I've tried to, I've, I've had to use them when I was like working on a couple of other, a couple of things. I, I don't know them or anything, but uh, great videos. Sorry, I'm slowly going through YouTube ads. 
Here we go. All right. All right. Am I oh, Computer Chronicles. Okay. Or wait, no, that's the YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, but it's just re-uploads from like this old... So this was the main oh, here host. here we go. And they would show like, I guess this is probably like... The IP trans phones. phone. Wow. Informational transaction appliance. And they would show like, this is how you use the thing. How many and buttons does it have? <laughs> oh, a lot. Okay. Yeah. Starfire. Pippin! No way. No yeah, way. Mark Pippin. Nice. <laughs> I never figured out what happened to ours. I wish we still had it. Yeah. I, I, either someone stole it or it was misplaced. But where would it have been misplaced? So, I feel like if it was misplaced, it would have come up by now. It's possible. Remember, misplaced could mean accidentally thrown in the garbage like that server that one time. That's like stuff happened. Um, anyway, wild. For people that are wondering. That's a really good screen cap for back then. Linus and I did a, did a video on an Apple Pippin, which is what's here right now. I'm very surprised we randomly landed on an episode that has the Pippin in it. Um, Apple's game console. Yeah. And, and then it just like disappeared. I don't have it. I checked at home because you mentioned misplaced and I was like, did I just take it? <laughs> it's not there. I found other it's, stuff. It's the kind but. of thing that Luke would like borrow. Yeah. And be like, I'm going to check out this on my own time and then just kind of forget about it. Never return with or come back with like nine years later, like those GPUs that he took for his dad. <laughs> Brings back e-waste. And it's like, hey, I'm done with these. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want them? Like, I guess. <laughs> you did want them. Yeah, I mean, you never... Uh, honestly, if we ever needed to do a video on some old stupid GPU, then it's better to just have them sitting in the warehouse than to have to <laughs> go eBay dumpster diving for one. But yeah, yeah, no, I, I have no idea what happened to it, which is really frustrating because I don't want to buy another one. I'm sure they no. haven't gone down in value. And ours was immaculate. It was brand it was new in box when we got it. In very good shape. Left it in perfect condition. Like we yeah. fired it up once just to make sure it worked essentially. Yeah. And it's a really cool piece. Like it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. But yeah. The, this, this show is like actually pretty cool. I would have absolutely loved to watch this if I knew it even like existed and also had access to it back then. But um, it's kind of a cool because there are such good versions uploaded to this YouTube channel. Um, it's kind of a cool time capsule to go look back at something. We talked about this on Wan show not that long ago, but the whole, like the internet never forgets, uh, unless it does thing is, is pretty real. And there's a lot of stuff from like the nineties and early two thousands internet eras that are just sort of gone now. Um, so it's nice to be able to have something like this where it is actually being decently preserved. Dotto's Don't data forget cafe. about Dotto's Data Cafe. I think you've met this guy. Yeah, well, I know Steve Dotto, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know Steve Dotto. So but this was a Canadian... Uh, I've never seen this. Sort of similar idea. Uh, this guy's great. He's got a ton of personality. Yeah. Um, super fun guy. Super nice. I've... Uh, yeah, very nice. I, I think I've only met him once, but really nice We dude. brought him on WAN show once, actually. I've, I've been meaning to, like, collab again. Anyway, this is on Netscape, Netscape Navigator. I, I would... I would... I could like, totally... This is so cool. I could totally see myself doing, you know, something like what uh, Steve Dotto did. This is awesome. And again, like, surprisingly solid screen capture. Yeah, he was telling me that um, that was one of the big things that they innovated was oh. um, using old cameras to capture from, like, to shoot a CRT screen without the scan lines mm -hmm. that, were, that were pretty typical on other shows at the time. He was saying that wow. was something they figured out really, really early on. But yeah, yeah, good old, good old Steve Dotto. <laughs> uh, anyway... But yeah, a lot of old shows, like I think you've talked about this too, like Made in Canada uh, is like impossible to find. No, you can get it now. CBC oh, really? Gem, whole thing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And uh, I uh, <clears throat> made my own copy just in case it ever disappears again. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Actually, that's good. Genuinely. Uh, but I like that um, 
whoever's behind the computer chronicles was proactive about getting it up themselves i believe this channel is official um and it seems to have like basically everything which is just awesome it's uh, really cool it's I mean, it's such a it's such a valuable resource yeah. that no one's going to watch and then an ai is going to scrape it and then we'll have access to it with no compensation for the original creator hey did you yeah. see that um Oh shoot! Is it the Times? Hold on. Who's uh, who's suing Microsoft for billions? Oh my! I think it's the New York Times. Yeah, New York Times has filed a federal lawsuit against OpenAI and Microsoft, seeking to end the practice of using its stories to train chatbots, saying that copyright infringement at the paper alone could be worth billions. Okay, I don't know about billions, but it definitely could be worth something. And what makes this even spicier? is that, um, from my understanding, Microsoft has released a statement saying, okay, so first the New York Times said that uh, part of why they're so upset about this is that they have been in negotiations with Microsoft and OpenAI to use it legit, legitimately. And Microsoft basically came out and was like, uh, okay, yeah, we kind of thought we were still talking about this. This lawsuit is still super disappointing. This lawsuit is super disappointing. Um, what I suspect is that they were just so far away on the number that the New York Times has basically just gone, Screw yeah, forget it. Um, and so they know from negotiating with Microsoft, and this might have been part of their play. In fact, that actually wouldn't surprise me that much. They know from negotiating with Microsoft that New York Times data has been given a very high level of credibility in training. And remember, guys, there's a lot of different aspects of training. I'm not, you might think the New York Times is a rag or whatever. I don't feel like talking about that. That's, that's not the point. Not the the point. point is that there's a lot of elements <laughs> that you might be training a large language model on, and not all of them are necessarily the accuracy of the article. I don't care, I'm not gonna talk to you about that. Uh, what we could talk about though, is things like punctuation and grammar. So the, the, the chatbot having any kind of sense of what a sentence is supposed to look like. Yeah, I would probably take the New York Times over your Twitter post. Um, I know, I, I know, I know, I know. So fake rude. training <laughs> thanks twitch chat real helpful <laughs> appreciate you <laughs> oh boy anyway sorry i don't think this is in the dock but i just was reminded of this by something else that i was looking at here um is this maybe doesn't sync ai but i know we've talked about you know the arresto momentum of of ai that's been going on a little bit lately and i mean this seems pretty if they win this pretty much anyone whose data was used to train these these large language models is going to have to go back and prove they didn't use them or they are man every, every everyone and their dog has been busted at this point multiple times yeah um i don't think it's going to stop anything because there are people developing this stuff that don't care and enough of it is open source that people are just going to be able to scrape on lower levels than corporate and you won't be able to go after them properly and you won't know they're doing it and it's not going to matter. Cat's kind of out of the bag. When this stuff got heavily open source with like Llama and all these other things, like it's done, man. It's oh, I don't mean there's anything that they can do to un-Pandora this box. Oh, got it. Okay. I just mean the big companies... Oh yeah, some of them might get hit real hard. Yeah, are they are we'll they see. done? I think I think what what is it called? Um, when there's like a landmark case, I think it's called a landmark case. No, but it, precedent. It, it, that precedent. There we go. Yeah, I think this <laughs> this is going to set precedent pretty. What hard. is it called when there's an avalanche? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, destruction. Um, yeah, no precedent. I think is going to be set by this pretty hard because these are two very major very recognizable in their space companies. If you talk about news in North America, yeah. you probably know New York Times. If you talk about software stuff, especially operating systems, you probably know Microsoft. Like it's, yeah. Man, New York Times versus Microsoft. Pretty big deal. <laughs> we were, yeah. We were, we were talking about this on the pre-show. I, um, I ended up down a rabbit hole on like, yeah. why boxers stood like this. And it turns out there's, a lot of very compelling reasons for it. As far as my it. understanding goes, it mostly boils down to bare knuckle boxing versus not. Well, it was... It was but there's other things going on. Yeah, mostly bare knuckle boxing. But then uh, one video I watched in particular, I wish I could remember who did it, but I uh, got a little bit more into why 
this pose is better for bare knuckle boxing. It well, keeps them at a distance more. Yeah. It protects, it was a lot more body shots because you, you, you were not punching people in the head. Uh, you'd still go for the soft cheeks. You'd still go for the jaw. Hitting someone in the forehead can actually be really, it can hurt your own hand a lot. Yeah. Um, you're also not doing like the big power punches as much. So your rear hand is usually back to protect your, your yep. body. And you're focusing more on jabs with that front hand. Like it's actually yep. a very different style of fighting. Yeah. So you, but you, so you get the old like, yeah, see, we're gonna fight to the bare knuckles. Yeah, very good. Um, do we want to talk about manufactured DRM sabotaging Polish trains? This was like last week or a couple this weeks ago. Pretty or epic, like yeah. That, but it's terrible. A, a, a decent amount of the news in the in the show this week is somewhat old, but you probably weren't paying that much attention to the news anyways because you were busy with holiday stuff. Yeah, so why did you tell it's them? It's fine. It's fine. You didn't have to tell them. Nobody has to know. Polish train manufacturer Newig. Here's, New some, here's some news. Bidets are popular. New wag. New og. Not as popular as screwdrivers, though, still. Screwdrivers, very popular. Hey, you need both, right? Do you do you need a screwdriver to install the bidet? I don't remember. Definitely a wrench. Yeah. But that's not a screwdriver. No. So not, yeah. That, Sounds you know. like we need a wrench. I mean, I wanted to do a fail wrench. <laughs> what would that have been? Uh, it was going to be like a wrench made of melted down failed screwdriver shafts, shafts. from that s supplier who shafted us. Ah, yeah, uh, nah. Got him. Uh, Polish train manufacturer Nuag, that's what I'm going to call oh, it, is under ouch. investigation by regulators following allegations that it installed DRM-like software on its trains that caused them to fail, uh, to fail to restart after certain set triggers in order to drive more service work to itself one competitor sps i mean it sounds pretty smart to me do <laughs> you just get to do more you get more service revenue yeah which is probably good money because they're going to really want those trains back on the rails uh one competitor sps was hit with fines equivalent to 462 thousand euros dang because new ag trains for the lower silesian railway it serviced would fail to restart afterwards um, I'm, wow. I'm assuming after servicing. Uh, the rail operator then sent the trains to Newag, who easily fixed them for an additional fee. Suspiciously, trains that hadn't been recently serviced, but had sat unused in storage for significant periods of time, started failing in a very similar manner. In response, SPS... Oh, man. Brilliantly, in my opinion, whoever had the, the, the thought of doing this, very good move. SPS hired a Polish hacking collective called Dragon Sector, sick name by the way, way to go on that one, uh, to investigate. According to Dragon Sector, the trains were intentionally programmed to stop working under certain conditions, such as certain components being replaced without a manufacturer approved serial number. These included an idle timer that would stop the train from starting if it sat for over 10 days, possibly under the assumption that it was undergoing servicing. Um, after trains started failing after only being, uh, after only being stored, a new trigger was programmed uh, in that added geofencing around competitors' workshops so that the trains would instead lock up after being brought to those facilities. Newag is denying these allegations and claims that these issues were caused by third parties interfering with the train's security features. I love how often <sighs> the security card gets played. Yeah. Anytime a company gets caught doing something Sometimes scummy. it is legitimate. Yeah, this but time, I, no. I said when they get like caught it. doing something scummy. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. amazing how... Because most people either don't understand security very well or especially don't care their eyes just glaze over the second you start talking about any kind of digital security or anything like that and they're like uh-huh uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. is he bought is he badgering me to install a password manager again i i like my one two three four love password or you know or whatever the case may be um <laughs> so if there's any way to get people bored of a conversation it's to say oh it's it's in the name of user security and then just start saying a bunch of stuff and people will just kind of gradually drop out of interest and you know get a, go about their day the the private key needs to go in the and then like 98 percent of people just disconnect anyway basically that's bad and it should be obvious why that's bad and 
Uh, this is a great illustration of why companies like Apple should not be allowed to do similar things, and a great example of what Apple, if left to their own devices, might have eventually come up with for iPhones if they weren't ultimately able to stop people from repairing these things through serialization and all the other means uh, that they put in place to prevent people from repairing their own iPhones and from third parties. It's, it's somewhat stunning to me how many people will do this stuff and not out their own companies, I guess. It's interesting. I don't know. I mean, people do, f do far worse than this for a paycheck. Yeah. Like, come on. But... Like, be realistic. Yeah. Think of the things you've done. <laughs> <laughs> the horrible things. Yeah, the um, horrible things. Yeah, no, I just... I, I think... Maybe it's my bubble of like finding recruitment kind of hard, uh, but I feel like software developers, like if you're like, hmm, I'm going to defraud my own country, basically. It's like, yeah, you could probably get another job. Um, sorry, you're saying that software developers yeah. have a tendency to always be the good guys? in the story no oh what do you how sorry sorry hello? i thought you i thought you were saying like someone would see the idea of defrauding their own country and then resign from the job rather than go do it i'm saying in this particular case i think yeah. if you work in that field you have a high chance of finding another job i can understand for some positions some jobs it might be like this is the only way i'm gonna get bread on the table i think a lot of people just don't care luke I think a lot. I think a lot of developers would just oh my God. develop a, a button that like kills a random person and <laughs> deposits a million dollars into the company's bank account as long as they get a piece of it. Like I, I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I just wish that wasn't a thing. That's all I'm saying. I, I also, I also think that. I mean, okay, okay, but like, okay. Here's another thing. Look at the. Okay, look at the arguments around net neutrality. Look at the arguments around right to repair, especially when you start getting into the, you know, the Apple ecosystem and the people who are just kind of, I don't know how to describe it other than brainwashed. I'm really sorry. Um, when, we, when, we, when we made that video about the <laughs> iMac Pro that Apple wouldn't repair at our cost, the number of people that attacked us for it, when we basically said, yeah, it's pretty obvious that just, you know, replacement parts should be a thing at a reasonable price. It shouldn't cost as much for just some pieces of a component as it costs for the entire, or some pieces of a machine as it costs for the entire machine, including those pieces. That doesn't make any sense. The number of people that attacked us for it, when that's just math, it's not political, it's just obvious. Um, so no, maybe in some people's minds, it makes perfect sense that if you are the manufacturer of a train, you should be the only one who's allowed to fix it because, you know, yeah, someone else might, might bung it up or whatever the case may be, which is not an entirely illegitimate concern. I just don't think that's what even happened. They were, they were taking these trains off the rails. I know. I just, I just mean as a preventative measure. N not even just to not get other people to work on them, though. They were doing them doing it randomly yeah. in order to get more service money. Well, you know, you got to make sure that they're running fine. And maybe that's the way it was sold internally. Maybe they weren't even honest internally with the developers who developed this system. Maybe they just told them, that, hey, we have found that um, the customers for these trains are not performing service at the recommended intervals. We need to make sure that the trains are, uh, are shutting down at such time as the regular interval should be done or whatever and it wasn't uh, coded that way and here's the pre i'm just i'm just saying there's a lot of room for gray area i'm not saying they should do this it's obviously terrible i'm just saying that just because a developer codes this feature doesn't mean that they agree and even if they do agree or doesn't mean they understand and even if they do understand it doesn't mean they agree and if even if they agree it doesn't mean that they're not an idiot that's all that's all i'm trying to say yeah but i disagree <laughs> It's bad. It's definitely very bad. Um, all right. Man, I have to get signed back into the dock, but people can see my hands, so I have to fake that I'm pressing keys that I'm not pressing, and it's getting all... Ugh. Oh, I never talk about that trick. Yeah. I just kind of... Yeah. Okay. You gotta do what you gotta do. Sometimes I type really funny stuff. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I like that. That's actually hilarious. Uh, sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna hide my hands. You don't get to see my hands. <coughs> I can see your hands. You can. No. Oh, you can see this bit. Well, you I can't see the this entire hand. No, okay. Well, Have fun just... with your like one letter. You're gonna see me. Input. Here, I'm gonna enter one of the letters. We'll just hope that whatever letter okay. I enter, yeah. is one that's like goes there. Yeah, it was pretty. Did good. I get it? I mean, it was in the alphabet. I, nice. <laughs> but was it in the numeric? Uh, <laughs> uh, Take note, chat. His password has uh, characters in it, <laughs> <laughs> and it's definitely, definitely English. Actually, it might not be English. There we go. Yeah, most of mine actually, they mix it up sometimes. Not English. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That's cool. I should use that. I'm, I, I'm, I'm hazarding. I have one trick for passwords that, I, that I love so much, but I, I don't know if I want to say it because one of the reasons why it's good is because a lot of like brute force password guessers never get it because they don't incorporate it. Mm. So I don't know if I want to like popularize its use. I think I want to keep this one for myself. See, that's the thing, though. That's a bad mentality, and you is know it? that. Should I share it? Well, but then, see, then it's the constant, like, cat and mouse game, right? Like, yeah. how, how do you help people have better security <laughs> without also informing the other side? And how does the other side if I do, do that, their then stuff without also none informing of us have the other side? Yeah. But, but no, that, that is. That, that is. Because <sighs> it's, a, it's a great trick. It's. I would say that that is not an LTT attitude. We are so a sharing is caring. I am not saying you should. <laughs> I technically don't work for Linus Media Group anymore. I'm still going to have to change your 700,000 passwords when you get hacked now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, mean, I, uh, I, I never said people couldn't get me just to be clear yeah I, th this is not a challenge i'm sure if someone wanted to hack through my box or they could get I, in there. I can just say it I, 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 chat mostly says don't do it but then some of them were like give us the tech tip because that's kind of you know that's kind of what we do is give people tips that are useful for a little while until you know the ne'er-do-wells go and update their sh** and then we have to come up with a new tech tip and that's how we all stay employed because there always needs to be a new what if, tech what tip. If I, what if I arm people to potentially figure it out themselves? Okay. I like that. Yeah, that's a compromise. That's a good compromise. A lot of passwords can take characters that don't normally get typed. Mm -hmm. Especially that don't normally get typed for passwords. Mm. Consider this. Mmm. My passwords are all going to be emojis now. <laughs> Especially when you're, when you're thinking about brute forcing. Because like when it comes to guessing or social engineering or someone just getting in your password manager or yeah. anything like that or, or uh, key logging, it's not going to matter what you do, oh, right? Like yeah. they just have your password now. Yeah. Um, but if it comes to brute forcing, there's a lot that you can do to make your passwords more brute force resilient while mm -hmm. still not making them really annoying to... Enter uh, like visually enter or whatever yeah, else. To remember, that's a big one for me. Is I like <laughs> my passwords to be something that I can retain in my brain for long enough to like shit it out into a keyboard or character map, as it were. Yeah. Yep. Confirmed. Luke's password is Lenny Face. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Navy Rymar. Love it. All right. Anywho, uh, <laughs> <That's> Klingon. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. Float plane chat. Okay. What are we supposed to be doing? <laughs> uh, let's just do sponsors. Sure. Thanks, Dan. Uh, the show is brought to you today by Manscaped. Do you always feel that your dates won't look you in the eyes? <laughs> what is that? What the what, what f is, is on that? my face? That looked like you had a turd on your face. Yeah, what, what, let's go back. What is oh, that? Is that, is it supposed is to it be coming boogers? coming out of my nose? Oh, I, I can see it. It's, uh, it's Chewbacca's. They're upside it's down. little Chewbacca's. It's Chewbacca's? They're Chewbacca's that are upside down coming out of your nose. Why are you at a, Ooh, what? Why are you in the hospital cafeteria? <laughs> like, is she on shift right now? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um. Huh. 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 What is this for? Okay. 
Well, anyway, um, our sponsor, Manscaped, is here to help you with all the awkward situations with their Performance Package 5.0 Ultra. It includes the Weed Whacker 2.0 to get rid of the naughty wookie sticking out from your ears and nose. And for down there, you can mow the lawn with the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Both of them have an IPX7 waterproof rating, so they're made to be used in the shower or rinsed off under the faucet. And their Crop Soother Aftershave Lotion is also included in the package to reduce skin irritation making your boys feel like they took a trip to the spa now you look good but you got to smell good too so finish it up with their crop preserver anti-chafing ball deodorant this says hmm that feels like an incomplete uh, talking point thank you dennis so check out the performance package 5.0 ultra at manscaped.com slash wancho and use code wancho for 20 percent off and free shipping okay hold on before we move on to the next one this is this is Hmm. <laughs> wow. Hmm. How am I supposed to read this character? Hmm. Hmm, Lu- hmm Luke's password. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, the show is also brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that makes it easy to get your website up and running quickly. Whether you're looking to build a website for your business, blog, or portfolio, they have tons of easy-to-customize themes and templates. Not to mention, world-class designers create their templates and they look absolutely stunning and professional. It's super easy to use. Just drag and drop and with a couple of clicks your site will be ready for desktop and mobile. Squarespace is more than just a website maker though. They also have built-in SEO tools to help get your website more traffic, which is crucial for e-commerce. And they have email marketing templates, they have a logo maker, they have all kinds of great tools. Squarespace simplifies the process of making a website and helps you market your business more easily. I wasn't looking at any of the things that we're going on on screen during this. Okay, cool. Wow. And if you need help, I'm surprised I'm surprised Dennis doesn't have his wow. uh, candle Leo. making side hustle on here instead of pizza, whatever this is. Uh, I, does he still have the candle making he, side he hustle? He probably thought that he couldn't do that because of whatever self-promotion. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, you can do it. Hold on. Let's see. Does this still exist? Uh, well, it's not easy to find. That's for sure. The one Dennis Liao I found on LinkedIn is in California and works in investment banking. Okay, it doesn't matter. The point is, uh, Squarespace, if you need help, they've got your back with helpful guides and 24-7 support. So go to squarespace.com slash WAN and try Squarespace for free for 14 days. Use code WAN to get 10% off your first purchase. Finally, the show is brought to you by The Ridge. Are you struggling to pull this big thing out of your pants? Struggling to get it in is more like, nobody wants to see that. Our sponsor, The Ridge, is here to reduce your pocket clutter. The Ridge wallet is slim, minimalist, RFID blocking, and made with premium materials. It can hold up to 12 cards plus room for cash with either a money clip or an elastic band, and you can even add a coin tray that carries coins, keys, and any other small items. You can also add an AirTag cash strap so you won't lose your wallet this year. Hey, that might be your New Year's resolution. They have various colors and styles to choose from, even 24 karat gold if you're feeling extra fancy. So bundle up and save 30% with essential kits that include a wallet, a key case, and a coin tray. With over 80,000 five-star reviews and a 99-day risk-free trial, you must try the Ridge out. For WAN Show viewers, you can use code WAN to get 10% off your purchase and free shipping. We're going to have a link down below. All right, Dan, you got a couple merch messages for us? Why don't you hit me? Sure, let's grab some here and let's see. Um, I hope your holidays were great. Merch messaging to ask about HDR. Uh, YouTube on mobile. Your camera footage looks great, especially skin tones, but web pages look dark and gray. What's up with that? That is a great question that I'm sure Ed could answer. I'm sure it has something to do with, you know, peak brightness being white and that also having some kind of uh, metadata for being extremely bright or something. Yeah, that shouldn't, that shouldn't even be it. I'm not sure. Um, it probably has to do with that we have to upload, um, you know what, it probably is actually that because the way that the metadata works on YouTube is more like HDR10 rather than HDR10 plus where it's per frame. So it's, it's across the entire piece of content. So if you have anything in the entire video that's supposed to appear bright, like a specular highlight, a candle or something like that, then that's your 100% 
brightness. So anything else is probably going to look dimmer and more gray by comparison because we wouldn't want to actually send in a 100% full white um, every time we do a screen capture. Uh, I'd have to I'd have to double check because we have people internally whose jobs are to understand that stuff better than me. It's the kind of thing that whenever I'm making a video about it, I'll like brush up on it and go, oh yeah, 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 that and kind of refigure it out. But um, yeah, that would be that would be my guess. I think that's something you'll probably continue to see because one of the complaints that we've gotten, not just on HDR content, but SDR as well about screen cap is that when we capture white as white and people are, you know, a night mode user or like our dark mode user or they're watching at night, it can be very jarring when we go from the host who's, you know, lit in a reasonable scene to just like an all white page. Um, so I, I that could also just be something that we adapted for that. Linus and Luke, if you could design the ultimate futuristic tech gadget that hasn't been invented yet, what features would it have and how would you envision it transforming daily lives? Oh man, I mean, I feel like with the, the, the boundless human imagination that exists out there, there's no way I'm going to come up with something that someone else already didn't. Like, uh, th the idea of being able to conjure anything by just, you know, rearranging atoms or whatever. So what, what are they called in Star Trek? Not synthesizers, the, the, the food things that they make. Yeah, I don't Tea remember. Tea Earl Grey hot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, uh, the, being able to go anywhere instantly. Being able to have anything instantly, ironically, I suspect it would actually take a lot of the um, fun, fun out, of things. out of certain things. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so part of part of the fun of like replicators. There you go. Part of the fun of a trip. Um, we're apparently going to Japan, and as far as I can tell, ninety percent of the excitement about this for Yvonne is the preparation, not the actual like going there. Like if you could just walk into a hollow deck and be there immediately. I actually think it would, I think it would reduce the satisfaction for her. <laughs> yeah. For me, it would be Why are basically... you laughing? You don't think I'm an expert on Yvonne's satisfaction? <laughs> Maybe not. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, I think it would be things that actually get me off devices more. Um, and mm -hmm. I, th I think that could come in the form of uh, input even. Like you, I, I see a lot of people, I don't do this. I don't actually know why, but I see a lot of people dictate messages through voice. And I think that's kind of the direction that I'm talking about. Um, is like, yeah, I don't necessarily want to sit here and type this whole thing. And while staring at the screen, if I can just press one button and talk into it, I don't want to talk to things. I need a neural interface. Yeah. But th that's what I'm saying in that direction. Ah, I'm not saying that because we basically already have that. Yeah. So the, yeah, like things that can get me off of the device, maybe different input methods, whether it's neural or whatever else, um, things that, uh, like we've talked about this for a long time, being able to wear glasses that are basically a Rolodex. Yeah. I almost don't want it to do anything other than be a Rolodex. Yeah, just like tell me who that person is and why I'm supposed to know them. Why I'm supposed to know them. <laughs> how many times have I met this person? Uh, especially if it's more than zero. Um, like, yeah. And, and it, 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 I, don't, I don't even necessarily want it to be creepy. Yeah. You can pull this information from my contacts. Yeah. You know, like don't, don't search the internet. Yeah, have be, it be local. I'd be happy to do a little recap yeah. for it. Like, yep you know, hey, this is important for next time I see, you know, whoever, right? There's there's ways to not be awful, but it will be awful. Yeah. 100%. Oh, yeah. It's going to end up being connected to some creepy database. Yeah, it's going to tell you everything about and uh, it's gonna, everyone. As it learns from your usage, it's going to upload that to everyone else as well. It's going to be horrible. Yeah. Uh, but a non-horrible version of that. I'm going to use it because it's going to be, be super great. useful. Yeah. But yeah, things things that make it so that I actually spend less time manually myself using the devices and the more the devices stay in my pocket or stay closed or whatever else and doing things sounds great to me. Yeah. Gurgi 8 says, make me Neville's remember all from happy, from happy Potter. Oh, that's a funny typo. Yeah, happy, so just, happy Potter. I can, it, I, I'm, I'm imagining Adam Sandler as a magic golfer. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he like makes okay that movie was great but I thought he makes like good <laughs> movies now um, oh man um, anywho I thought his most recent movie like went really well 
um, I don't know what one it was. Hustle, I think? I'm not sure. Adam Sandler makes whatever movie he feels like, as far as I can tell. All right, hit me, Dan. Leo. Hey, okay. hey, DLL, I'm currently listening after I cleared out my fridge that just died. Got any oh, good appliance failure stories for the audience? Uh, I mean, other than... Oh, man. Uncut Gems, yeah, there we go. That's what I was thinking. That was a long time ago. Was it? Yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't keep up with movies these days. Yeah, that's fair. Um... I, I, every appliance I've experienced die dies very unspectacularly. When fridges die, it's pretty bad, especially if you don't notice for a couple days. Oh, but I mean, like, the device itself just stopped working. Like, it didn't... Oh, yeah. Oh, our oven had a bit of a problem the other day. Oh. Uh, we, have a, we have a Bosch oven, and fortunately, it has error codes that work, so at least I know what the problem That's is. That's nice. But we went, to, uh, we went to bake some banana bread. We had three loaves Banana in there. Banana bread? Oh. At work, dude? You're not going to know that meme, but I love that meme. Cool. It's so good. All right. Anyway, so we were going to make some banana bread. Yes, some of it might have come to work. Um, and suddenly, there's smoke all throughout the house, and the banana bread is not definitely not going to be good <laughs> Chat liked it uh this is well before the timer was supposed to go out it's not like we just didn't notice it and the the door was locked we couldn't even get it open oh so it, it turned out what had happened was like a, a runaway temperature event so the heat just kept going past what it was set to past the thermal safety limit for the oven which caused it to lock itself down and then it basically had to, it, it, it did manage to safety shut off. So it was, I looked it up and it was huh. one of two things. It was either your temperature sensor has gone bad, which it wasn't because the thermal shutdown happened, or it was your relay wasn't working properly for the, so like, it sent like a disconnect signal. And yeah. The, the daughter board that was supposed to handle the relay. Right. Um, it has worked <laughs> People said, okay, you can reset it like this, and then assuming the temperature sensor is good, sometimes the relay just magically starts working again. So it's worked fine since then. But it was a little sketchy. Like, it smelled like burning. Like, not like burnt food. Like, burning. They came out black. Yeah. They're supposed to be brown. <laughs> you know, golden. You yeah. Know, in the parts where it splits at the top, because it's mm, delicious banana bread. Very anyway. Oh, I love banana bread. Uh, dude. Banana bread? That work, dude? Hell yeah. My mom said. <laughs> okay, that's... That when you wait for things, dude, good things happen to you, dude. That's number five. <laughs> what? That's, it's number five autocomplete for banana bread. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you know this, dude? So this is just like a Dan Daniel, like, random viral clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Do you know this one, Dan? Yeah, it's, uh, it checks out. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. It's also old. It's good. Yeah. I'm old, so it being old is I, fine. I yeah. just, I mostly just quote vines constantly in my entire life. Yeah, yeah. Roadworks? <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope it does. <laughs> no, See, good. you just have to say one little line. God, I miss vine. Yeah, yeah, me too. All right. Uh, well, cool. Yeah, sorry, I didn't, I did not get the reference. <laughs> I didn't think you would. <laughs> I did it for them. <laughs> All right. I uh, got one more for us, Dan. Yeah, sure. Let's okay. see. Hey, DLL, I'm a PC repair tech and a veteran. Have you? Oh, I read that as veterinarian. So did I. That's, that's a weird combo. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes and way more sense. And I had the same sense. thought. I was like, huh. I hope they're like one shop. That'd be neat. <laughs> <laughs> you got the one counter, you just put your computer on it. You got the other counter, you put your dog on it. So my laptop and my dog. Just don't put your dog on problems. the computer counter. They're going to put the USB diagnostic drive in. Whoa! Trying to tur <laughs> turn the dog on and off again. It's like, it's not working. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Anywho. Um, yes, a, a PC repair tech and a veteran. A lot Carry more on. sense. Yeah. I assume so. Uh, have you all done any or plan to do any how to not get scammed online videos that I can share with my elderly customers? Oh, we've touched on this a little bit, but it's like, it's so hard now. It's really hard because we can't cover everything. It changes. Nobody wants to watch it. The people like yeah. the people who are going to get scammed. I don't know how to say this respectfully probably it's, not watching it's show. not like the resources aren't out there to 
find some out. of it's getting really rough. Some of it's getting really actually very hard. Yeah, I I got a I got a spam call that was really good. Like if I was if I was even slightly less of a competent adult human being, I I could have easily given valuable information over the and phone. People are doing uh, voice spoofing of specifically. I'm not going to get into the the reasons why for this, but specifically mom's daughters. Oh yeah, well, and they're like talked about that on the show in distress before. and yeah. stuff. Like that's oh my goodness. The one I got, they um, <sighs> it came up as from my bank, mm-hmm. so I did answer it because I'll just ignore anything that's not from anyone that I recognize these days. Yeah. Um, so it came up as my bank, and they basically were like, "Yeah, there's been some fraudulent activity. Don't worry, we've locked down the card. We're going to get everything reversed for you, but uh, we do need to to check some things with you." And um, then at some point, you know, everything sounded fine. I was like, I was talking to them. I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, that sounds pretty bad. No, I didn't use the card. Um, and then as soon as they asked, what's your, uh, can I just verify the credit card? And I was like, well, you should be able to tell me which one. And they're like, it's the one that starts with the first four digits. And I was like, yeah, but every credit card issued by, your bank. Your financial institution starts with those first four digits. That doesn't tell us anything. Uh, you need to tell me, like, the last two. And they basically were like, no, I need, I need the whole number. And I kind of go, okay, well... Um, the tip I would say for this is always oh, hang on, up and call them back. Oh, okay, well, hold on. We're getting to that. Okay, yeah. Um, so I basically said, well, how am I supposed to know that you are who you say you are? And they said well, I mean, I called you from the bank and I go, yeah, but that can be spoofed. And they're like, uh, and I say, look, I'm just going to call you back. Click. Uh, because a lot of people don't realize that the phone number that someone's calling from can be spoofed. So they can just tell it, Hey, I want this to show up as one 800, whatever. When I call the person, It's, it's getting freaking sophisticated and there were things about the call that made me uneasy like the extremely long delay on the line but it wasn't until i looked back that i went oh that's probably because they were calling from very far away they're probably overseas somewhere yeah um and they just they did not have an unconvincing accent three seconds or something yeah yeah Always yeah. call back. Call back the number on the back of the card, except nothing else. Yep. Yeah. I do that for basically any institution that calls me. If it has anything to do with payment or, or yep. changing pretty much anything. Um, if the thing that we're discussing could hurt me at all, or if they ask for any form of authentication, then I call them back. Yeah. Like I've had back when... Yeah, why didn't you authenticate me? You called me. <clears throat> yeah. Back when TELUS used to be cool, um, they used to call me every time that I had to renew my contract and they would be like, hey, uh, we're going to give it to you like either cheaper or you get the same price and more features. Yeah. And I'd be like, sick. Yeah. Do it up. They'd be like, okay, bye. Like, I'm not going to call them back for that. Whatever. Yeah. It's fine. Um, But if they're like- The worst case scenario is- you don't, you don't get the better features. Yeah, but they didn't ask for any authenticating <laughs> yeah. things. They didn't ask for any payment stuff. They didn't ask for whatever. They just, yeah, it was fine. So that was fine. It just, it was one of those things where I was, I was on, I was having a particularly like groggy day. I hadn't slept well because this was this week. Um, and uh, Yvonne's in recovery mode and not sleeping well. Uh, she she just, sick? Yeah, no, she um, had three of her wisdom teeth out. Oof. They were impacted, and the ones on the bottom were growing in sideways. Oof. So the bottom is already the worst, and then they were under the gum and growing this way. So she had to go under. It was when like when very, was that? Um, beginning of this week. Yeah. She's been like replying to emails because she's I was gonna say f-ing insane, but she's like she's been answering things. I know. I t- I talk to her about. <laughs> she should talk relax. To her about shit, man. Like, it's I quite t- a like genuinely. <sighs> There's a lot of trauma. You're preaching to the in your choir. Mouth. Yeah. We were. Is she doing ice pack rotations? In the same conversation, she goes, "Yeah, I f- was feeling worse today because I think I overdid it yesterday." <laughs> and then she goes, 
but I think I should be able to push tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm just like, who do you think you are? Luc Lafreniere? <laughs> I just, I have a type. <laughs> <laughs> yeah ridiculous anyway the point is i hadn't slept much because yes ice pack rotations and everything i i loaded up on we had like four ice packs say. in the house i was like we probably need double that so i got a bunch more ice packs and got all the different the, the drug cocktails like felt like old people like i put together like a medication schedule for her and everything um what was she eating congee um congee, nice further pureed cream of broccoli soup mm. um she's able to do like uh she was really tired of that after a couple days and on day three she was able to do overcooked instant noodles and she was like this is heaven <laughs> <laughs> like soggy instant noodles i i broke up the pack first yeah so they were like little tiny pieces right. of soggy instant noodles yeah um and then the egg, I put in like extra egg because I think she had zero protein since the whole thing started. So I like trickled it in and like stirred it. So it was basically just like kind of like a cloudy broth. Almost, yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but she's just like, this is so much better than what I've been eating. It's horrible. But I can't remember the name of them. And I'm sure Float Plane Chat will again be able to point it out. But my, uh, I can't remember the the doctor name for it but dentist guy that does surgeries um orthodontist is that right uh no i don't think so that they do like um braces and stuff oh right orthodontist. yeah yeah i don't know either way um he suggested this like drink that you can just get at like save on or whatever else um oral surgeon yeah okay sure i thought it was more complicated yeah what's an oral surgeon yeah What's yeah. the like name behind it? What's a uh, what's a uh, what was this? What's a landmark case? <laughs> <laughs> I, I what's the word? For this fucking darn guy. it! Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, it's it's this drink. Um, Tooth fairy. So we we thanks bought, float plane chat got you. <laughs> <laughs> we bought like a a bunch of this one type of drink because it was recommended by the guy. Um, yeah, is it Pedialyte? Insure. Yep. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, and we figured out that it's like very common for like, you know, old people that have trouble chewing because of various oh, okay. things that might be going yeah. on. Um, and it tasted really good. Really? So when I was on all the drugs, I was like, this is great. Yeah, just I'll just have this. This is no problem. Oh, is it just like full of and sugar? And then when the drugs started fading, I was like, why does this taste so good? <laughs> it's basically a milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> like actually does it bring all the boys to the yard though <laughs> probably it brought me to the yard um nice where's the can i get a nutrition label um ensure nutritional info okay we're going to your screen not yet yeah you never know what might come up you search for things on that internet <laughs> <laughs> okay here we go it does have a lot of the vitamins where's its information it's got a bunch of protein can I go to your screen yep. so that we're not just imagining this? It has nine grams of protein, but it also has 18% of your daily sugar in, in 220 calories. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So it's it's sugar It's water. basically a milkshake. <laughs> and they'll even flavor them like milk, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. Oh, nice. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> But when you're having milkshakes for every meal, it's like, whoa, okay. That's how they get you. All right. Isn't corn maltodextrin just like corn syrup? Is that in there? Is that, it's was the that second listed? ingredient after water. <laughs> so it's, it's water and corn syrup. <laughs> and then the next one is sugar. <laughs> the next one is like milk, effectively. Oh, it's a thickener. Sorry, it's it's oh, thickened okay. water and then sugar. <laughs> so yeah. Nice. Yeah, with with milk protein in there as well. So it's it's basically Ooh. a milkshake. Um, yeah, maltodextrin is the um, the like corn based. The the it's one like the gum. one added thing that they they do give you is it is pumped with like vitamins and stuff. But still. So are vitamins, which you can just buy. <laughs> yeah, they're not even expensive. Oh my goodness. For how cheap vitamins are, it's actually kind of amazing how unmotivated I am to just take them. Yeah. I just never... I'm always like, yeah, I'm going to like take vitamins now. And then I do it for a week. And then I just am distracted. I, I thought it was hilarious because I, um, I was taking... I'm still taking athletic greens 
to kind of flush out my diet because I eat a lot of the same thing all the time. So I'm sure I'm missing some stuff. Speaking of um, which, confirmed, Luke will be doing a float yeah, plane exclusive <laughs> with the 100% success meal, showing you guys how to make it. I haven't made it in years, so I'm going to have to practice. I wow. Guess. So basically you're saying once you're in a relationship, you don't have to try anymore. Yeah. Or you can try wow. other things that don't need to have that type of success what a rate lesson. as much. What a lesson. Because you're getting there anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can hear Emma being taken for granted from here. What? That, no. Um, what was I saying? Anyways. Luke is single in three, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, no. Emma's great. Yeah. Um, um what was I going to say? What was I even thinking of? You totally... And generous, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Emma's mom and dad. Um, well, they don't watch this, do they? Oh, they sure do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it doesn't sound like my problem. <laughs> All right, vitamins. Rad. This is All great. Right, vitamins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, I started taking athletic greens to round it out. Yeah, vitamins. What is in and that stuff? <laughs> <laughs> what's in those anyways um oh, no. and i i confidently said i don't just, just high five her <laughs> <laughs> I, I confidently said that i was getting sick less yeah and then like very shortly after saying that i got sick like twice in a row and yeah. one of them lasted a really long time and yeah I was like, that was well, nasty i don't know travel um, man travel gets you yeah, travel and gatherings. Yeah. Both of those two things are rough. Travel girlings. Yes. Especially both. That's what I was <laughs> trying to say. I know. Oh, my goodness. Win789 um, says, meh, if her parents don't know you're doing it by now. That would be a little weird. Yeah. Yeah, no, we've been abstinent for, uh, man, what do you guys have, like seven, eight years? Eight. Eight I years. Think. Good gravy. Eight, I think. Good gravy. I mean, it must be. <laughs> I'm hiding by the mic. Oh, God. <laughs> Dan, save me. What? No! That's not saving me. Get out of here. Why'd your face so red? Ah, um... Drug dealers adopt drones. Yeah. According to a recent Vice report, law enforcement around the world are noting a marked shift in using drones to move drugs across international borders over the past few years, driven in part by consumer drones being becoming larger and increasingly cheap. Mm -hmm. In 2021, Spanish narcotics police captured a drone with a 13-foot wingspan. Whoa. Um capable of carrying 330 pounds of cargo. While this was a mass manufactured droid or drone built in China, um, built in China in 2022, Spanish authorities. Okay. Yeah. Found three submersible drones that were manufactured specifically to ferry drugs and capable of carrying 440 pounds of cargo. Wow. Drones are also being used to deliver drugs and other contraband into otherwise difficult to reach areas within countries such as prisons, as reported by officials in the U.S. and Canada. Yeah, I read an article about this a, a while back. Apparently that, it's yeah. really difficult to stop them because it wouldn't be a giant 13-foot wingspan one that's just like, yeah. do, 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 coming up to a prison. It would be little zippy ones going, and, you know, they have time out in the yard or whatever else. Um there's very little incentive, I don't think, for the the people who work there to be have 100% constant monitoring of the all the skies in the area. Yeah, like, like it's it's a really difficult problem. You could drop it from pretty high too. Um, Although oh, last October, the UK government introduced no fly zones around all of their prisons, which of course, I mean, if you just have a regulation, that's that'll, gonna stop it. That'll keep out the ne'er do wells. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Jeez. That's a big drone, 13 feet. That's and that would be huge. able to go pretty high, probably. Probably. But then would it be better to keep it low from like a radar standpoint? I don't know. No idea. I mean, I, I'm not involved in contraband smuggling, so I, I also don't know enough about radar. know very little about this world. Isn't radar specifically worse at picking up small objects? I don't, I do small, not yeah, know. Small, yeah, but that's why I was saying if it's it big, is pretty big, it could probably get up high. But it's, it's also going to have a lot of space in between the arms, I suspect. Stay low. 
I suspect those arms are thin. Yeah, but if you have like 330 pounds of anything, I'd imagine that's... That's a, fair. I mean, considering that they can that's pick up fair. a little whirly bird or whatever, like that's probably got to have some substantialness to it. Yeah, 330 pound capable drone could smuggle the prisoner, never mind the drugs, yeah. <laughs> Man... I'm I wonder sur- if anyone's tried that. I'm surprised we haven't seen a jailbreak. Yeah. Just a drone just with dude. like two bars on the bottom. Yeah. Just like get jacked in prison. Just yeah. it's arm day every day. And all, all you, you do, do is just, just like hangs. Uh, yeah. Just, <laughs> Until you just like jump up, grab the thing, and it freaking goes. Man. It'd be dangerous as heck, but oh, like yeah. compared to staying in prison, would I try it? Yeah, I think so. Wow. Would you do it if someone arranged a drone <laughs> to just show up in the yard? Would you grab think, the bottom of it think, and go? I think it depends on like how long your sentence is. You're in there for 10 years, let's say. 10 years. You will be, you know, 40 whatever by the time you're out. If I have a chance of getting out of the country and thus not an insanely high chance of just being put back in. I don't think maybe? you have to get out of the country. No? Like, if you go legit and just, like, live a quiet life, I think you could probably go somewhere, like, interior BC or, like, you know, oil fields Alberta or something, just, like, work in an unofficial capacity. You could probably lay low. You don't think people are going to report, like, the guy that wants to work but refuses to give you a... I think you'd be surprised how many people are just like that anyway, Mm. regardless of their pasts. Mm. I was another article I was reading recently was about the sort of uncomfortable truths that are being unearthed by services like 23andMe. Um, and I just want to make my position on them clear. You shouldn't use them. They're super, super bad, not oh, yeah. just for you, but also for anyone related to you. Uh, anyway, uh, but what was interesting about this was there's this family that found out that like grandpa was a completely different person from who they thought he was. He never played with Babe Ruth. Um, he like had a completely different family that he just abandoned Whoa. and this was just, it didn't match anything they knew about him. They knew him as like a loving father and grandfather and didn't realize that he had just walked away from his responsibility in the U S before he moved up to Canada or something like that. Oof. I don't know. Allegedly. Um, that's unfortunate. Anywho, 10 I've, years. I have heard of a crazy amount of people finding out that like their parents like someone cheated on somebody or something because they're like, huh, I don't have anything from this line. That's weird. Um, yeah. And also just like family lies in general. Yeah. Uh, that that might come from... Like, oh, yeah, we have Irish, you know, heritage yeah. or whatever. It's like, don't... What are you talking about? No, we don't. In some cases, I've heard that those were very well-intentioned, actually, but it was eventually forgotten that it was a lie, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, because, like, they did so to avoid persecution or yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Uh, but then eventually the, the lie was kept so secret because it was so important yep. that it just was forgotten eventually. But Top 10 drones that get you out of prison. <laughs> That'd be a good video. Man, the, the <laughs> propellers on that thing would be scary as fuck. Fuck. Is it like an April Fool's video? Like how to break out of prison? <laughs> am I, am I going to have to buy another cantaloupe? I'm smuggle in drones. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you smuggle in a swarm of tiny drones. Yeah. In people's butts. <laughs> and they all work together to lift you. Jeez. Was that the first video you worked on or something, Dan? No, it was one of the first requests I got for a video. Um, I don't think I'd been here very long. I was working in logistics, and of course, it was like, oh, hey, we need a cantaloupe for this video. Uh, <laughs> why? Why do you want a cantaloupe? Oh, well, it needs to be an analog for somebody's butt. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> we're going to put a phone in it. <laughs> butt phone. Uh, butt phone. All right, I should have stayed at my last job. <laughs> What, they didn't have butt phones at your last job? Uh, no. <laughs> Boring. I signed up to manage inventory, not butt phones. Inventory the butt phone. Yeah. Te- exactly. Technically, we also had to do that. Well, you have to find it first. <laughs> oh, it's, it's very uncomfortable. Time to play find the phone. <laughs> we knew exactly where it was. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, boy. What even is this show? Sorry. Who knows?
Oh, wow. A Griff Aviation 300 can carry 227 kilograms or 500 pounds of weight. It only has a flight time of 31 minutes. You could get pretty far in 31 minutes. But you, but that's, yeah, 15 kilometer range. Sorry, Griff yeah, Aviation? Yeah, Griff Aviation. There's an Ehang 184 that can carry 220 pounds and go 30 kilometers. That's each. far enough away that you'd be kind of hard to track down. I'm looking at... There's a Joav CW-80E that can carry 55 pounds and it has a flight time of 840 minutes or 100 to 200 kilometers, which is like, wow. Okay, what am I looking at? How big is it? Tell me how Griff big it is. 30? Get- the one I was looking at was a Griff Aviation 300, not 30. Uh, this I hate websites this like this. This site looks so really stupid. annoying. Oh yeah, I would like it to take forever to navigate your website. Why don't you make a site like that? That thing also doesn't need to fully take over the screen. It only covered half the screen with information. How big is it? How about a single picture uh-huh. with any kind of a banana or something? <laughs> Six. I need something for scale. How about a banana? That's perfect. Ah, oh, this is useless. Forget it. I give up. Okay. Ah, uh, what else we got? Brands use AI influencers. I mean, this is pretty funny. Oh, here, here, here. I got oh, it. You got it. Okay. But that's a kind mountain. Of funky looking. How, Luke, how is that supposed to help me know how big it is? Okay, here we go. Here we, oh, wait, Max. Size. Here we go. It's 3.4 meters long. Pew. Pew. Wait. Oh, 3,400 meters. Wait, what is even that? Okay, I don't know. Uh, that looked... Uh, sorry, I, I thought it... Okay, sorry, what is it? So I'm, I'm reading this off of a TV over there. I thought it yeah. was, was 3.4 meters, which would kind of make sense. But height is, is that 600... What? Sorry, what? 0.6 meters would make more sense. Oh, kilo, 3.4 kilometers? Size, length? That doesn't make any sense. Probably, it's probably millimeters and there was a typo. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so 3.4 meters then, yeah. probably. Yeah, they're about that big. Yeah. Okay, and okay, then okay. Point, yeah. That's a very reasonable. Six meters for height. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's about how, how big they should be. Yeah. So mills is what the, they were going for there. Yeah. Um, there is a space. Uh, they all have spaces. Never mind. I think it's just a typo. Brands are apparently increasing, increasingly buying paid posts from AI-generated influencers, such as AI Tiana Lopez, a pink-haired model created by Spanish agency oh, yeah. The Clueless. They run this is an wild. Instagram account for AI Tana with over 250,000 followers, many of whom seem to believe she is real, despite the account being labeled as AI. She also has... Oh, man. You know, I find the term NPC to be extremely disrespectful when used to apply to people, mm. but I just can't really... Yeah, I can't really... Um, you know what? In fairness, powered by AI doesn't necessarily mean anything. That could mean that you are sponsored by an AI company or something like that. Especially when it, when you look at the whatever that icon is, I don't know, balloon or something. Barcelona's digital muse at the clueless.ai. You might think powered by AI is like yeah. just part of the like I'm pushing the company thing. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So that's a thing that is definitely a thing that exists. I had seen, if you go to the top of her pictures. Yeah. I had seen that top right one and didn't realize it. I saw it on an unrelated article and I just scrolled right past it and no part of my brain was like, that's not a real person. According to The Clueless, AI Tana typically earns around 3,000 euros a month but can earn up to 10,000 with each advert being worth over just over a thousand euros. Her sponsorships include big, a supplement company. Uh, she also has a fan view account where they post pictures of her in lingerie. The UK's advertising standards agency says there are currently no rules requiring virtual influencers to disclose that they are AI generated and many do not do so. A primary attraction of virtual influencer campaigns for companies is that they're significantly cheaper per impression, up to 91% cheaper based on an Instagram analytics report on a virtual influencer post by H&M. They also give the brand a far greater deal of control and eliminate the complexity and risk of dealing with human beings that have opinions and reputations. 
I mean, I mean, we talked about this before. I think I said a number of years ago, if I was smart, I'd be transitioning to be a VTuber. I think this was back when we were on the set that was at the opposite yeah, end of this you've building. Been saying that for quite a while. But like, man, for real though. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah. There's been a bunch of accusations that I've seen that like a lot of the followers are uh, like paid bot accounts and stuff, but... I mean, if they're getting paid, it's working. Yep. So here's here's the clueless AI. So here's their, I guess they have an. Oh, man, I don't know. Can't I'm not like gonna log click on Instagram. anything because Instagram on desktop just. Well, I'm not logged in. Yeah, but come on, I don't know. Yeah, uh, they they want you to log <laughs> in. I, I, I need that data. Exactly. Sony got fined for sabotaging controllers. French regulators have fined Sony 13 and a half million euros for allegedly damaging the reputation of third-party controllers via a 2015 PS4 update that intentionally caused unofficial controllers to frequently disconnect. Further, regulators say that Sony selectively refused to communicate whoa, the whoa, access. Whoa, wait, no way. Elijah follows her and didn't know. No way. Actually? I'm actually speechless. Elijah. I thought she was real, no joke. Yeah, and if you scroll up, there's, what? I thought this chick was real. I follow her. Wow. Always full of surprises, this guy. Wow. Yeah, li life, man. It's, why, um, why do you follow her, Elijah? Don't, don't answer that. <laughs> Elijah, get out. I plead the fifth. <laughs> What's, what's She's hot. <laughs> oh he my says. God. Oh, I gave you. I gave you a warning. They didn't even care. There was no right answer, and yet you still managed <laughs> to pick the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, he probably hasn't seen war games, has he? No. Ah. Uh, okay. Uh, well, I yeah. Anyway. Wow. Uh, further, regulators say that Sony selectively refused to communicate the access criteria for its official licensing program to certain third-party manufacturers and used language that was imprecise because it allowed them to apply the criteria in a discretionary manner. Man, I... Can, can, can Europe, like, do something not cool? <laughs> this is... This is great. This is great. You should have clearly laid out guidelines. They should be fair for everyone. And third-party products should work just fine as long as they follow the guidelines and, you know, properly interface with the device and you shouldn't go out of your way to break them. Like, this all just seems like such obvious stuff. I wish it didn't take... What, what is this, from 2015? Yeah, I wish it didn't take eight years to deal out sort of piddly fines. It just seems like there they, should well, be a much faster to, way. They might have had to figure it out. This is kind of a weird thing to figure out. I guess so. I just, I, I wish the wheels of justice moved a little faster sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously you don't want to, you know, wrongfully, yep. you know, whatever, but <sighs> just see, you know, the, this train thing is probably going to take years to resolve when it just kind of seems like don't do that, you know, stop, um, would be, would be good. Yeah. Uh, someone had an interesting point, um, that I that I want to kind of follow up about that. I don't remember her name, the AI person. Uh, da, 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 I can't even find it in the doc. But that that AI created influencer chick. Yeah. Someone had an interesting point. Um, at least in the U.S., I think you can't copyright AI created works. So, anyone can be her. Yeah. And then I guess what would they have to have like a like a fan account, you know, disclaimer on their thing? Like, well, would you even? I don't. I guess not. Yeah. So, like, you could just AI create images of her doing things that are very bad for brands and then just post them? I guess you could. But then... It seems very... How would you get any traction on them? It seems a very attackable position. Oh, I guess, yeah. Well, okay, yeah, I see what you mean. So, you wouldn't really be able to be a huge AI influencer, yeah. but you could have a th an army Probably. of AI micro-influencers yeah. pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Because <clears throat> it's a very assailable position. Anyways, moving forward. Um, Twitch bans pretending to be naked. I don't know how they're going to enforce this because it seems like what they were trying to do with that whole sort of 
thing recently with the artistic nudity thing was they were trying to make the rules so more more clear and more open so that they wouldn't have to deal with this constant sort of argument about Twitch's rules and the interpretation and the uneven um, enforcement of them. And now they've gone and they've given themselves a rule that seems like it's going to be very difficult to enforce evenly. Uh, Twitch is updating its content guidelines to ban implied nudity following a surge in nearly naked streamers covering their various parts in black sensor bars and streamers using strategically placed objects and careful camera angles to give the impression that they are nude. According to Twitch's post about the update, while some streamers were correctly labeling their content as containing sexual themes, which would prevent them from showing up on the homepage, others were not. I actually talked to Yvonne about this um, a couple times after that stream. I had meant to kind of come back with a bit of a more nuanced take on the whole thing because I think that during that WAN show, I basically was like, well, I mean, realistically, this is kind of what Twitch is anyway at this point. You might as well get used to it. It's been this way a long time. And, you know, realistically, those miners that you're so concerned about are like six keystrokes away from <coughs> seeing this stuff anyway. But then I said on the show that this was as a not a non-user of the platform. I don't really use the platform. And so I went out of my way over the next couple of days to fire up Twitch first because I was just talking to Yvonne about what we were talking about on WAN show and I was like, oh yeah, there was this whole thing on Twitch and I brought up Twitch to show her, to talk to her about it and immediately there was like breasts in my face and I didn't realize how bad it was. Yeah. If I just wanted to use this f***ing site to see what I'm here trying to see, even if... Even if I am, you know, super open-minded about, you know, pornography or whatever else, and even if I was a pornography enthusiast, maybe that's not what I'm on this site for right now. And maybe I would actually just like to watch someone play video games or something else, anything else. And so over the span of the next couple of days, I was like, okay, let's play a game called I'm going to open the Twitch app. Having never clicked on one of these streamers before in my life, although I was logged into the work account, so strictly speaking, I don't know if nobody's ever used it for that. I don't think many people have the work Twitch account. I don't think so. I think it's basically <clears throat> me. Yeah, I don't think it's many. It's not yeah. just you, but um, I don't think it's many. Oh, Dan, apparently. And me, and ah, I see. probably AJ, mm -hmm. and probably Yvonne. And <laughs> well, yeah, but they would, like, Yvonne would never use it. Um, and definitely not for that, as far as I know. I mean, I'm not hey. saying it wouldn't be cool, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, no. The point is... <laughs> I decided to play a little game called I'm going to open the Twitch app and see how long it takes, how many scrolls it takes for there to be boobs in my face. And it was basically instantly every single time. Yeah. And and I, I even was like, like, look at how bad this was. And without even looking, I scrolled it in front of her. I was like, okay, how many boobs were there? And there was like five. And to be clear, he doesn't mean like, he, he means a, 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 a very noted focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mean that there happened to be, you know, memories. I mean, like, that was obviously the point, because this was at the height of the whole, uh, you know, cutting off the frame right here, and the implied nudity thing that was going yeah. on right in the wake of the artistic nudity uh, rule change. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, Elijah said the first time I showed my wife Twitch, she thought it was a cam site. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. cleavage is still allowed. However, under boob is explicitly forbidden. So to everyone watching on Twitch, where's the line? Where's the line? Like on a guy? I don't know. Yeah. It's, I, is it just female presenting nipple? Where's the under boob? That too. Is that, is I mean, that, that's a Tumblr thing, is right? Under boob. Do you even have any? I don't know. Do I have nipples? <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know. You look there. <laughs> You'll never know. Um, oh, boy. All right. Yeah. Elder Scrolls 2 Daggerfall revived in Unity? So sick. I want to play this. I want to play the Warcraft 2 campaign. Huh? Someone redid Warcraft 2 in Warcraft 3 Reforged. Oh. Yeah, I want to play the Warcraft 2 campaign. Apparently it's only half of it now. I would but be maybe super if they down. get some more maybe if they get some more support for it. Sorry, this is not the topic. That sounds um, great though. That's yeah. a really good idea for a project in that game. 
Here, uh, GameSpot. Um, Warcraft Chronicles of the Second War. Okay, how much traction does this have? Because hopefully it's a lot. Lorecraft Designs. Yeah, they got 166,000 views 18 hours ago. Warcraft 2 Tides of Darkness. Ah! Yes. Ah! That's really cool. So cool. I can't wait to play this. They say, look, it's a little janky. We're going to have to patch some stuff. Yeah. Warcraft 3 Reforged is a dumpster fire. But, um, <laughs> man. Ah! So it's remade and like, you know... That looks sick. Theoretically more modern, but hey, Warcraft 3 Reforged was a dumpster fire, so, you know, it looks as good as it's going to look. But I can't wait to play this. I've never played the Warcraft 2 campaign. What? Yeah. So oh. this is like perfect. Warcraft 2 is where it gets playable. Warcraft 1, trying to go back and play it as a Warcraft... Like, you can only select like four units at a time. It's yeah. Like, it was... And the two... Would have uh, been, I, I'm sure Warcraft 1 was fantastic when it first came out. The two factions are completely equivalent. <sighs> Almost. I think Necros and Clerics have slightly different spells, but you could, like, I don't know, unless you could do like 500 actions per minute or whatever, you're not microing that stuff. It, like, it's impo the interface is terrible. <laughs> um, so so uh, the maps have, are like very limited resources. Like even playing against the AI as a teenager, like I would have difficulty breaking Warcraft through. Warcraft 1 AI is hilarious. Because you just, have you, you've played one, but not two. I played one with you. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Why did we do that? The first Warcraft game I ever played was Warcraft 3, and I loved it. Oh, Warcraft 3 is amazing. I loved Warcraft 3. I loved Frozen Throne. I put an insane amount of time into custom games. I kept somehow losing the, like, CD keys, so I probably bought, like, three or four copies of that freaking game. I bought, like, three. But least. every single one of them was worth it, to be completely honest, because I put a ton of time into Warcraft 3 and specifically Warcraft 3 custom games. I played an insane amount of Wintermall Wars. That's why I'm so excited about that new mode that you found for FAF, um, Survival. Survival mode, yeah. I, I think once we kind of get it, it's going to be really yeah. fun because it reminds me a lot of some like old... Tower defense yeah. games and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, Which I always loved. Oh, I love tower defense Very games. fun. Yeah. Oh. Hey, uh, if we're going to report on whenever he's a complete asshole, then I guess we should also report when he is not a complete asshole. Um, Logan Paul is apparently finally offering refunds for that crypto zoo thing. I don't trust it. That's fair. It's like the Anchorman meme where he leans back and goes, I don't believe you. Or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, alright. Well, we'll yeah. see. Show me when it's done. Okay. And then I will, I will happily give That's props. fair. That's yeah. fair. Because I completely agree. If we're gonna, you know, if we're gonna throw people under buses, we should also give them props when they do good stuff. Absolutely. Um, but I just, I it's just only right. don't believe it until it's done. That's oh, all. apparently there's a catch. Oh no. Ah ha! Ah! Ah! Oh, you agree to not <laughs> sue and stuff? Oh no, Coffeezilla is apparently already on this. Get him, Coffee. <sighs> oh, all right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yep. You gotta sign an indemnity thing to... Alright, well, alright. Um, Behold the claw! <laughs> Yesterday, MSI teased an upcoming gaming handheld, and today, images and benchmarks leaked onto social media indicating that the new device, apparently called the claw, will use Intel's Core Ultra 7 155H and eight Arc Alchemist XE cores for graphics, unlike the Legion Go and RG Ally, which use AMD. According to the benchmarks posted on Geekbench, the device will have 32 gigabytes of RAM. Here is a leaked image of the MSI Claw, courtesy of at WNXOD, whatever that is. <laughs> that looks like an ally. Sure does. Uh, leaked Geekbench information. Okay. I'm a little surprised to see them use Intel, but I also don't have mm, any familiarity really with the Core Ultra 7155H, and I don't really know exactly what these Arc Alchemist XE cores are going to perform like, but if it's anything shy of, you know, Steam Deck, I think they're going to have uh, an uphill battle ahead of them, but I'm, I'm excited to check it out. I'm, I, I, I love, I love my Ally. I ended up sticking with the Ally. I love the screen on the Steam Deck OLED, but um, nothing I'm playing right now 
will benefit from that screen as much as I need the extra performance. So mm. right now it's all about performance. I'm playing a platformer that I'm just realistically not going to say because I don't feel like it. Did I say platformer? It's more of an open world oh. fantasy game. Yeah. Um, and I just I don't it... feel like having a conversation about it, but it definitely requires performance. And so I, uh, I'm sticking with the ally for the time being. That makes sense. Why not a PSP? I'm going to, I'm going to have some time this weekend to because not try Final Fantasy again, but I'm, I don't think I'm getting that thing yet. Oh, we made him a new computer. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, we have to make sure it works before we give it to him. So that's a whole thing. I thought it was, I thought you were just going to give it to me not knowing to be completely honest. No, I, I was fine with that. No, that's content. Oh, okay. Yeah. If it doesn't work, then that's content. So that's good. Got it. Um, but yeah, I still have, I still have my computer with the AMD card laying on top of it, um, which I'm also fine with. Um, but it's very unstable in this one part of Final Fantasy, but, uh, I have some time this Sunday, so I'm going to check if there's a new driver update. And if there is, I'm going to give it another shot because I want to keep progressing. Not one person knows what <clears throat> game I'm talking about. Good. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'm just, I'm amazed at all the terrible guesses. Why would I, I got it you, immediately. Why wouldn't I tell you guys if I was playing Baldur's Gate 3? Like, yeah. Greatest, greatest game. I, what, what would you say the best game in the last decade is? Because that's been the new conversation. Is, is Baldur's Gate 3 the best game in the last decade? Um, I, you're not going to like this, but uh, I, I think Breath of the Wild Breath is. Breath of the Wild? And I, it's, I think it's a it's, strong argument. It's an absolute masterpiece. Yeah. Um, I think it's a very strong argument. There's other people in chat even saying Breath of the Wild. Wow, no. Ugh. No, it's not in the last 10 years. Come on, people. Ugh. Also that. Legend of Zelda TOTK? Tears of the Kingdom. Oh. The Tears of the Kingdom was... Uh, I think I you've didn't get into go, it. Uh, if you're comparing the two on their release, I think you've got to go Breath of the Wild. Yeah, Breath of the Wild was a moment. In yeah. gaming, man. Yeah, it was. And this was on a console that hadn't sold a ton of units yet, right? Like, that's another thing to consider. Is the Tears Switch? Yeah, Tears of the Kingdom released to an install base uh, that was an order of magnitude. Yeah. A lot of people bought Switches for Breath of the Wild. Yes. Like, 100%. Um, and yeah, that's fair. Tears of the Kingdom is Breath of the Wild, but better. But greatness is not the same as goodness. And Breath of the Wild was great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Breath of the Wild. If you, yeah, for sure. I haven't played Last of Us Part One. Um, <clears throat> got some people talking about that. Genshin Impact. I want to play Genshin Impact, but no. I mean Genshin Impact. From my understanding of it, is kind of yeah Breath of the Wild, but Gacha and yeah. newer. Yeah. Um, I gave it a good old solid shot because a, a member of our team, an esteemed member of our team, suggested it quite highly, and I tried it, and it wasn't really for me. Titanfall 2... I can see why people really like it, though. Titanfall 2 had a great story, really enjoyed the gameplay, but I don't think there was anything that said greatness to me. Like, you I, have to have innovation, too. I feel, and I think this might be a negative reflection on where shooters are right now more than it is a praise for Titanfall 2. I think if you narrow it down to shooters, I think Titanfall 2 was the best shooter in the last decade. But I like I just single said, player maybe, but single I, player definitely. I mean, you, you, when you talk greatness, though, greatness has a connotation of scale. Did you play Titanfall Two multiplayer? No. Whew. Yeah, but scale, Whew. small. Whew. I'm sorry, but if you want to talk greatness, I, I honestly think you have to have conversations about Fortnite over Titanfall Two. I'm sorry. Like Fortnite has done, yeah, sure, for a different generation than you that you might, you might not be into, yeah. but they have innovated in a way that is changing the industry for Did better they? or for worse. Did they? Things like, I, I don't think anyone has done an in-game event events? the way that Do Fortnite people has. actually care? I genuinely don't know. Are you kidding me? I M genuinely don't M&M's one recently? I didn't even know he had one. Huge. Okay huge i'm yeah mr I'm very... marshall mathers still brings the crowds i'm not surprised so you know you gotta you just have to kind of minecraft isn't the last 10 years yeah uh, you could make that argument if it was in the last 10 years yeah but no yeah minecraft changed gaming in a big way 
But yeah, anyways, that conversation is literally cropping up around that game, which I think is fantastic. Oh, hey, uh, we have uh, Mr. Chu just posted in flips and chat. Did you see the video of the kid who finally beat Tetris? Yes. I was riveted. I couldn't look away from it. I can't, I can't believe that that is human capability. Like, I, I, I can't even fathom watching this kid play. Oh, it's crazy. Do you know about the whole rolling thing? And yeah. Everything? Yeah. Fantastic. What? Fantastic. What? So cool. And 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 how he he missed the one break point. The Almost tension, lost it. The tension in that gap. Like what? <sighs> yeah, couldn't believe it. Very good. The fact that someone else was racing against him at the same time, and I think either lost their run or paused or something, and then switched over to watch him win, and was like congratulatory and very cool about it, was yeah, also just cool. like a fantastic reflection. So wholesome on that community. Um, yeah, very, very cool. Very, very cool. Yeah. So when we say beat Tetris, for those of you who are not familiar, it doesn't end. Yeah. But eventually the game crashes. It can theoretically get to level 255, but then it just loops back to level zero or one or whatever. Yeah. But um, it will crash before it gets there, I think, is the issue. I, I think it gets to a point where you... I, I, don't, I don't know fully... People are saying it runs out of memory. Runs out of memory. Yeah, some yeah. some problem happens, or or the amount of things that can cause it to crash. Apparently, some news anchor like crapped on him. That's stupid. Yeah, yeah. What do you not she have? She basically hobbies? told him to go outside and touch grass. I mean, it's not a terrible idea, but the kid didn't look like super unhealthy or sickly or anything. He probably would, does touch. Grass. I would also. So I actually agree, but like, I would. Cares? I would also throw out there that, in my opinion, he just set himself up for a career yeah. as a successful Kid's famous. streamer. Yeah, and he streamed the whole thing. And like, if I remember correctly, he was on Twitch, um, but was removed because of age restriction reasons. So I think he was streaming on YouTube or something. But like, tons of people know his name now. He could play other games. This skill is going to transfer I mean, to other. Imagine games. for a second if he took that and was like, you know what? I'm going to resurrect Guitar Hero. Let's make Guitar Hero cool again. Guarantee you, he'd kill it. He'd kill it. Created a career for himself at yeah. 13, and you're going to tell him to go outside and touch grass. How, Come on. Yeah. How, how, it's like, how much do you make as a mid-tier news anchor or whatever? Like, I think this kid's going to do all right. <laughs> Might outscale you before he's like 15. Yeah. Like maybe, what were you doing at 15? Maybe 13? hold your horses a little bit. I don't know. Just like, oh. Y'all need to look up Clone Hero right now. Okay, Game I do know alone. about Clone Hero. It's super cool. Um, this is the, the same way as people beat Pac-Man. Yeah, Riley and I had this debate earlier. To uh, Was that today? What did it, yesterday uh we had this debate yesterday um i i think a community can determine a beat point for a game if there isn't a clearly distinguished one or okay well this one they did have a beat point but it had only ever been reached by an ai player it hadn't been reached by a human one and that was the crash apparently there's like a yeah. percentage but chance you, of crashing he, at various here's, stages yeah here's where the confusing part gets though because he had planned to beat it at like level 154 or something and ended up beating it at level 157. So the argument is like, could someone beat it at a higher level? Mm. I mean, watching to me, him do that, I doubt it, but sure. I don't really care as personally, Riley didn't agree, but personally, I don't really care as long as the community decides on a point, if that makes sense. Yeah, but you can decide and then someone will break past it anyway because that's how people are. And then what was the point of deciding it anyway? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think just I know there's enough speedrunning communities sure. and there's enough of these types of communities where they kind of have to come up with something. Right. Because sure. it doesn't make a lot of sense. And I'm personally okay with them doing that yeah, because but they why did. do I an care? An organic game crash, an organic kill screen. I think that's valid i mean yeah, no one can ever be the, the first to get that again and i've heard that now the the competition moving forward is going to be like getting a higher score before you hit that crash whether that's through getting more like tetrises which is where you clear four lines at once i think um not really i was actually decently into tetris for a while there but not anymore um or just other yeah other various ways of making try to try to manipulate your score to be higher before you hit that crash point and i guess that could maybe be by getting to a higher level I don't know. Anyway. Incredibly cool either riveting. way. Riveting. And that news anchor lady's a jerk. Apparently, like, in the same breath, pretty much, she congratulated a 16-year-old darts player. Cool. Because that's... 
it's so much more outside <laughs> and athletic than Tetris. Honestly, though. I mean, come on. Please. The finger rolling thing is so sick. It's so cool. I love that, too, that, like, they tend to wear gloves, I think, because the, the fingers, like, slide better by, by wearing, like, like, it looks like cotton gloves. I don't know. So interesting. Absolutely wild. Uh, oh, I think it's time for Wancho After Dark. Okay. <laughs> Dan processing unit, just like, uh. <laughs> Oh, okay. I was going to check and see if he's streaming on Twitch, but then I realized he's 13. He's probably not allowed on that campsite. <laughs> uh, blue Scooty. Blue, blue Scooty, Scooty. Which yeah. is like actually a sick name. I actually, it's, it fits like, you know, he's 13. He's playing games. What's your name? I don't know. I have a color I like a lot and Scooty sounds cool. Yeah. Blue Boom. Scooty. Let's go. I like the name. All right. It's got to be hard to come up with names. Apparently he was banned from Twitch for being too young. Yeah, I said that. Fair enough. I mean, he doesn't even have fully developed breasts yet. What did we do on that site? <laughs> yeah, dude, like, trashing on this kid. His most recent video, the, the first time anybody, uh, somebody has ever beat Tetris, two million views. Come on. All right. Uh, Dan, hit me. Sure. After getting into computers through your videos, I'm graduating this year and starting my dream job in CPU design. Whoa, that's super cool. Do you have any optimistic messages going into 2024 for my doomer generation? I don't. Um, There's no hope. It's one of those things where I feel like I'm in a really awkward position where I, I am a participant in, you know, the whole millennial, you know, being crapped on thing that happened like i i i did join the workforce at a time that was not great um the worst basically sorry the worst yeah the, the worst a little bit better than me pretty much um but i mean still terrible like i i i joined the workforce right as the 2008 financial crisis was happening and you joined right as it had happened yeah both of which were really both terrible terrible times um I, I i i watched as property values went up faster than i could earn money to put a down payment on something fortunately i was uh, i was lucky enough to find a teammate really early in my life that put us both i, I can't stress enough finding the right person to partner with for your life is the most important decision you will ever make bar none because it has a waterfall effect on absolutely everyone else. I was both lucky and I'll give myself a little bit of credit for being a good job interviewer, I guess. But, you know, Yvonne and I found each other and put ourselves way ahead of our peers uh, just by, by teaming up very early on. Um, which is what allowed us to get into the housing market. It's what allowed us to fund Linus Media Group. At a pretty group. good time. Well, it didn't feel like a good time. <laughs> totally. The value of that house had gone up double in like four or five years or something. Absolutely. Like it was... But... Looking back at it now, it's great. It's like hilariously low. Yeah. Like, but psychologically at the time, totally. watching the, the trend line, it was, it was terrifying because it seemed like it could burst at any second. So I understand and I, sim I not just sympathize with, I have felt a lot of what people feel, but as someone who got out um, and, you know, now run a successful business or now Every hire someone to run a successful business, <laughs> uh, like, I feel like I, I'm in this position where I can't really talk about it anymore. I don't really know what to say because I don't have solutions. I am doing fine, um, but I get it. So it's like, yeah, it's crap. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people probably would have told you you were nuts when you got that place. Yeah. But then, yeah, again, looking back at it now, it's like... It's a bargain. Yeah. But like... It's like less than an apartment. Yeah, like over half a million dollars on just like like the place to live. Like, are you kidding me? Like our, our I forget what our mortgage payments were, but they were a lot. Like if we weren't doubling up our incomes, there's there was no way. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe her income, not mine though. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, it's I, I don't know, and it's it's crazy to think that it was so crazy back then, and how bad it was back then is like a joke compared to how bad it is now. Yeah, and we got lucky in a lot of ways, man. Like when we when we bought the units that we occupy here, that the one not the one I'm sitting in, but the one that I would be sitting in if I was on the other side of that wall. Uh, they cost us three hundred thirty thousand dollars each Canadian. Um, let me just see if I can Rymar for sale, Surrey commercial. Let's see if let's see if there's any for sale here right now. Uh, oh no. Well, so yeah, Elijah's saying like out in what what, what would that be? Oh. Uh, Abbotsford. I would in like Abbotsford area, a, uh, where was it? Oh no, I lost it. Lots of people are talking. Yeah, I can't find any right now, but they've, they've basically like quintupled or something like that. I, I, I don't know. What 780 square foot apartment. Not close to here, like decently far yeah. out. 400 grand. Anyway, my point with these is that Ugh. we got really lucky with the ones that we got at the in the first place, <sighs> but then experienced a lot of the same frustration as we wanted to expand yeah. and found that the prices were going up so fast that as we needed more space, it, it was becoming unaffordable as fast as, as we could make more money. For, fortunately, we have run a very successful business and things have gone well and we've managed to you know find the space that we need but but you can't be just like a solid business anymore even no you it's not enough very yeah successful. or take outside money which we we're lucky enough to never have to do yeah like it's it's brutal yeah south syria detached house starts at 1.5 million dollars canadian so you know one point one five, one point two real dollars, but still, it's. I don't. Yeah, we say okay. So here's here's another one of the problems too, though, is in saying real dollars, I think that somewhat diminishes the fact that people here make less. Yeah. So like that's that's well, something that's I don't also think complicated either because people here have access to socialized services True. that other people have to pay for. Like when you actually break down everything it sort of depends it's not as black and white and regionally it's very very different yeah and also in certain yep. career paths it's very common for those jobs to cover that for you depending depending it so it, it, it's all blah, blah, blah. it is never if you think it's as black and white as socialized health care bad or you know this job good or whatever benefits package there are downsides and upsides to it is always shades of gray if you think you know for sure you're wrong it's that simple i'm sorry and i know that for sure which means i'm wrong yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only sith deals in absolute yeah exactly uh yeah elijah's saying minimum wage is still 15 bucks yeah that's also just like what what are you supposed to do with that you're a sith now <laughs> that's what's going on. he's obi-wan kenobi you know you can kind of pull it off with the beard Clone Wars era Obi Wan. It's not bad. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I have no good news, and it looks like it's going to get worse. Yeah, it's only getting worse. Like with interest it, rates being like they are, I, th I thought like housing prices would at least go down. Yep, not happening. Like what the what the as crap? far as I can tell, up still. So you're just going to have these like gigantic corporate overlords that own every place to live and then you'll just basically be well, there's, at their mercy. There's record levels of Canadians leaving the country because they can't afford to live here. Yeah. Which is like, and then, then and that, like, that oh, good. microcosms down to, uh, there's also tons of people leaving the province we're in yeah, for other provinces inside of Canada. So yeah. this is like a multi-step Alberta has stopped running ads to encourage Canadians to move there because they're like, oh, oh, this is a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> uh,
please don't see, eat see, me. See, before, before he would have even heard you say that, Elijah was like, can we start a smaller LTT in Alberta? Because everyone in Canada is like, oh boy, gotta go there. It's the only place I can afford to live. Yeah, well, no, And that's I mean, gonna change. Oh, man. Well, the Maritimes was good until COVID, and then apparently a bunch of people, like, moved out of the city and started just work from home there, and just like... Yeah. <laughs> prices up. Drove prices up prices like crazy. Up. Yeah. <sighs> We just, ah, uh, yeah. So let's start our own city, Elijah. We've talked about it. Just stop. Cold, We're not cold, st- cold, 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 cold. You'd do great. You could do it. You, you could do, do it. supreme. Taryn can run the business. You can run the cult. <laughs> I'd make way more money than him. <laughs> Cults seem to be very profitable. We don't yeah. need you know, money. Yeah. From we I have Linus. Tell. Yeah. yeah. Company store, do the whole shebang. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine all of the money that the company makes never actually leaving. Seagan says, we doing Linus Town again? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know. Yeah, I live in Prince George, make decent money, but will never own due to rent and housing prices. Yep. Yeah. I think that's true for most Basically people. an entire generation of people. Yeah. Which I don't know how the heck you could do it. Like even okay, unless you have parent money or something. This is going to get me canceled by someone. But like oh speaking boy. of parent money, even being in a position where my kids can afford to stay in the Lower Mainland because yeah. I can just facilitate that. Yeah, is that the life I want for them? Yeah, all their peers are going to leave. Yeah, none of their high school friendships will remain. Or they'll just be peers with people who are also kids of people who can do that. And which is also highly questionable. Yeah. Like as a parent of rich kids, I um, still don't want my kids hanging out with other rich kids. Yeah. Um, I, I want, my kids spending the vast majority of their time with down to earth people who don't take things for granted and stuff. We've actually been talking about doing a, um, doing, uh, an experiment, not an experiment because it's not really an experiment when you just do it. But (laughs) Yvonne and I have been talking Uh. about moving out of our house for a year. Um, furnishing and accessorizing a place based on two sort of median-ish incomes and living like that for a year because i feel like um are you doing vehicles too well it'd have to be yeah yeah like i feel like you can talk about it all day but i don't think that my kids can possibly fully understand that most people don't have a sports car and a theater and all this stuff that they, for them is just life for me is sweat, blood and tears. Yeah. And for them is just, it appears, it appears. I mean, and I'm guilty of it sometimes for Christmas. Um, you should, you should come uh, into my building. We can have pipe birthdays together. It'd be great. (laughs) For Christmas, Santa got the family uh, a Bamboo Labs 3D printer, Mm. which is as much for me as it is for them, which is how they end up with a lot of the stuff they have. But most people don't have a $1,200 3D printing setup. I, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, I feel like, I feel like there's a lot that they could learn and I don't think... I don't think a month is enough. Yeah. I, I, I think I paid so much for that pool that I am loath to give up a summer with the pool. But I think if we did an entire school year, like there's already a lot of things that we do pretty well. Like my kids don't go to the cafeteria at school. I feel like they always hit. take a lunch. I feel like it doesn't um, hit without the summer. Without the summer, you think so? Because the summer is going to be the most concentrated mm. point in time where they hang out at home and do home things. Well, remember, at there's... Least in my experience when I was growing up. There's lifestyle changes we're going to have to make regardless of home. Like, they're not going to be able to be in as many programs as they are. 
Like they just they 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 do you know martial arts and dance and and choir and band and like like all this, uh, some of it's you know run through the school or whatever, but some of it costs money and um they they're gonna have to make they're gonna have to make choices. House swap? Give him my apartment? I don't think. <laughs> I don't think he wants to be living in his house for a year. Um, funny funny idea though. Um, um yeah I don't I would uh. Hmm. Yeah, because like I'm thinking back when I grew up, we did a lot of things, but one that was kind of, I'm sure if my brother and I like really desperately wanted to, my parents would have tried to find a way because they were like that. Um, but ice hockey was kind of not really in the cards because it was so expensive. Ice hockey, especially at a competitive level, was extremely expensive because a lot of those teams were like flying around and stuff. To play games. Yeah. Um, and the gear is wicked expensive and you're growing out of it all the time. So you'd have to buy new gear all the time. But something like ball hockey, for example, like we were going to do ball hockey pretty much no matter what. Um, you just needed sticks and we never had the cool sticks. We never had the nice sticks. Yeah. Um, but like we could do it. We could play football. We played football all the time. My, my parents had me in a lot of programs is what I'm kind of trying to argue to a certain degree. I don't know, man. Don't sacrifice your children's development. This is a different kind of development. He's trying to get them more. Like I don't it's, think that's... Yeah, like they don't... taking this the wrong way. I don't know, man. We, um... It's, it's, it's something we've talked about. I mean, I do think there's ways it's that you can... concept. You can keep kids more grounded regardless. We have a lot of rules. Um, we, they, they lead pretty structured lives and stuff like they don't just get to do whatever they want yeah and so even though it's it's a funny thing even though we have a lot of different stuff that they're allowed to do the really good stuff they they have to sort of they have to pay for it in doing you know <coughs> practice this or chore that or whatever else um like i probably played more video games than my kids do at uh, at my son's age because he's just like yeah it's there but he's not allowed so He's like a really good kid. <laughs> it's kind of shocking. <laughs> I don't get it. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I uh, all in all, terrible idea. Why? I don't really get that. I don't think taking away the extra curriculars is a good idea. Yeah, I, I hazard that one a little bit too. But I don't understand why any of the rest of it would be a bad idea. <laughs> Elijah it seems like a funny rich issue. This is a joke. We are spoiled, so I will buy another house to teach them how to be humble. I did think that was pretty funny. Obviously wouldn't buy it. Yeah, just throwing right that out year. there. Yeah. Like, obviously. Um, You'd set up a leaseholding company, which would own the house in trust so that you can defer your taxes. Sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> uh. Um, yeah, see, this is another one. JPH290 says, I know this is not exactly perfect, but you can have the kids see what poor is really like in another country. That, that to me, actually had exactly the same problem as, as that other thing, is like, what, we're going to learn what it's like to be poor by being rich enough to jet set around the world and witness poor people in their natural habitat. Like, I, that seems so much worse. But I, I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this. Yvonne did a uh, did like an outreach program thing when she was a kid, and did you know like they built something while they were there yeah, in the community. Common. Yeah. And for her, that was extremely impactful. But then Yvonne, like me, also grew up in a house that had to budget every month. So was it that, or was she just already grounded, and that you know? was the final hit on the nail and then it was, you know, cemented as part of her personality or whatever. I, I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've just, I've read some really interesting. No, guys, stop. Okay. We got to stop. This is important. Oh. We got to stop. There's a comment. So in a housing crisis, you're going to collect yet another house in your housing quiver. No, 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 stop. Stop. <laughs> I'd make sure someone's living in ours. And no, I wouldn't be buying he's it. He's not buying it. He literally said he's not buying it. Okay. Stop. Oh man, I love this. I like hamburgers. You hate hot dogs then? No, I didn't. If I didn't say something, then I didn't say it. Can we, can we agree on that? <sighs> Maybe. Um, sorry, what was, I, what was I saying before? Right, yeah. So, um, something that I've read about a fair bit is <sighs> how 
the like the 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 number of generations. Oh, um, that wealth lasts. That wealth lasts, and it's yeah. like three, crazy, and then it's gone, like yeah. every single time, because it it's there's all kinds of problems with it, but it's the not whole, not technically every single time. Not it is very common, but it is extremely common. There are, there are particular families that have found a way to make it go for like literal ever. Um, but that's uh, part of that might just be the incredible wealth of those families because you can squander a small fortune very easily, but with a big enough fortune, you can squander really hard and it just is a perpetual motion right machine. Yeah, I only learned recently about why people um, hate billionaire philanthropy so much. Specific, not the like the image cleansing aspects of it, but the fact that I think it's in the U.S. They only have to spend, put I think five percent of the money into what they actually say they're doing. So if their returns on the money they put in are greater than five percent, they actually make money overall, and it's a tax and it's tax free. So you just get yeah, it's a whole it, it's a whole thing. I, I just I just learned about this recently. I don't actually know much about. Uh, tax havens and loopholes and all that kind of stuff. I pay my taxes. Um, oh boy! But uh, anyway, the the whole thing about about wealth not lasting multiple generations is because the attitude and mindset that makes you start a business and take risks and build it is not passed down by living in opulence as a child. And so the kids might have witnessed a little bit of it, but the grandkids are completely detached from any of the hustle that ultimately led to that success and they just blow it or something. So, <sighs> yeah. Why do you hate housing, Linus? I know, right? Yeah, Balmer is about to make a billion a year in dividends. He could squander a billion a year and still be richer. Yeah, exactly. I don't think that's the only one. I think some families have very strongly baked in preserve the wealth stuff sure and there's, um, there's but i think that's very abnormal there's communities and cultures that, that also too. have very different attitudes that about too. money yeah. um, than others yeah yeah tough man i uh anyway the point is just i want my kids to be good people i want them to be your kids are pretty cool. real people i want them to stay that way i agree i just like it's um I think that there's a lot of time. I'm not. I didn't say that to dissuade you from any further effort. Yeah, there's just, a, there's a lot of developmental years left for things to go really, sure. really wrong. Oh yeah. And so you're entering some of the worst ones. This is this is a super first world problem, and I 100% understand that. But I will do anything to keep my kids from being douchebags. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's like the worst. <laughs> like As I, two people that grew up not wealthy at all. Yeah. Uh, more on the poorer side. I it's obnoxious. I didn't like the rich kids. Me too. Like at all. Me too. No offense. Yeah. Um. But me too. Like they just kind of sucked. No offense. Yeah. There are exceptions. Um. Yeah, absolutely. Like I know Yvonne talked about one of the people she worked with at one of the pharmacies she worked at. I'm not going to identify anyone, but they grew up like jet set lifestyle. And didn't want any money from mom and dad, not because they had a bad relationship, everything was great, but didn't want anything, wanted to hustle, like, like 100% grind set and just super down to earth. And I'm like, yeah, but like, you can't point at an exception like yes. that yeah. and yeah. go, okay, well then it'll, everything will be fine, right? Like even if the odds were 33%, then two out of our three kids are going to be assholes. So... <laughs> <laughs> like we gotta, we gotta figure this out, man. I, I yeah, know. like I, I've, I've definitely met some exceptions too, but a lot of the times it's just like excessive out of touchness. Uh, so like, even if there's no intention there, yeah, just, it's like, oh, you need a replacement part for that game. Why don't you just three you print a new one? Yeah, exactly. I, I've told you this a story a yeah. billion times, but uh, there was a person uh, when I was in a certain class at a certain school. There was a person who dropped. They were holding their laptop like this. Yeah. And they dropped it and it smacked into the ground and they just laughed. And my brain just shattered because I couldn't understand at all. Like, You'd protect that thing with your life. Yeah. Yeah. And if I dropped it, which like, okay, sure. I used to render LTT videos yeah. holding my laptop open so that it would cool better walking between classes. Like it was sketchy. But if I ever dropped it, I would be like broken. Um, not laughing about it. Like it's just, it's, there's some, there's some like, 
context aware things where your automatic reaction in certain scenarios, if you've never had any exposure to like life being difficult, is going to be not really okay to the people potentially around you. My kids don't value money. Yeah. At all. That's not good. It means basically, like I they remember- can get jobs. I mean, yeah, of course. And then what happens, so, okay. But they haven't needed one. Totally. Like what would a kid get a job for? Well, what did, what did you spend your money on? I mean, I bought just like dumb like, stuff. I bought candy. I like saved and I would buy really early like, on sort of candy. big ticket things. Um, like I, I would buy, I bought a GPU upgrade for our family computer. The biggest purchase, I, I don't think I've ever talked about <laughs> this. The biggest purchase I think I made with like allowance money, like as a kid was I paid for the cable internet drop from the street. I remember you told me about this. Oh, I have told you about this. Okay. Um, My parents agreed they would pay the monthly bill if I paid the installation. And that was, it was hundreds of dollars. It was, I didn't have money, but I had all my $5 a week allowances and birthday money and all that stuff. And I was like, I want always on internet. Let's go. Um, But like my kids have always on internet. They have a switch. They have a gaming piece. What what on earth would they buy? Yeah, I don't know. Like I have all the cool toys because I just like... Most of the games I they make want. videos about setting up toys and I like I'm assuming cool, they have cool toys. This is all the stuff that I wanted when I was a kid, right? Yeah. So then they just like already have it. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know, dude. I don't know. Most most of mine was saving up for computers or computer parts or games or when I yeah. was very young it was candy. Um Yeah. Elijah, my my son does value money to a degree. Not like I did when I was his age though. Like I wanted it, you know? Whereas I think my to him it's kinda like I, eh. My brother and I wanted money so bad we didn't really have a traditional allowance but sometimes my mom would set up certain chores that we could do for money that were kind of like extra um and i remember for the snes my brother and i were on like uh (laughs) you you mentioned this term earlier we were on a grind set for that snes i think my mom was just like making up chores at a certain point um like going and like digging up rocks in the backyard and like sorting them so that it was less rocky ground stuff like that um but eventually we got enough money to buy a SNES, but my mom also hooked it up there because this was a lot. I don't think Craigslist was like a thing. I don't know how she found it, but she found like some dude we bought a SNES off in a parking lot. Um, and I remember like sitting in the car with my brother while my mom goes out and does this deal for a SNES in a parking lot, recognizing at that age, like this is kind of sketch. <laughs> 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 but she got it to us because it was way cheaper than Luke stolen goods left for yeah, right here, baby. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, but it was yeah, it was like it was when the N64 was already out, so it was a last gen console. Um, but I think that was honestly, I don't know if it was because we weren't as wealthy or if that was because that was less of a big deal back then. I don't know. Because I still thought SNES was like super cool when N64 was around. I thought it was just a different style of games. Like N64 was more attempting to do 3D stuff and SNES was more like perfecting 2D I stuff. I don't think either of us had as much access to advertising at the time though. Ah, uh, that might be it. Yeah, like I didn't see a lot of ads because we didn't have cable. So yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was kind of the same way. Like, yeah. Just, yeah. I was like, oh, he just has this... Toy. Yeah, like that friend has that one and that friend has that other yeah. one. And I didn't really see them as like better necessarily. I got really stoked when I figured out one of my friends had an original NES because I was like, whoa, cool. I haven't played any of these games before. Like I didn't really see it as like this one is newer, therefore better. Yeah. Man, this has definitely created some. Uh, man, this has definitely created some debate in the chat. I don't remember the last time I saw chat this active. People are everywhere from like. This is a great conversation to, you know, this is the most entitled horse shit that I've ever seen in my life or whatever. Just let them be kids. Like they can learn that later. They can't learn that later, though. Like, that's the thing. It's so formative. Later, later kind of is now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, was that one merch message? Yes. Good gravy. <laughs> How you doing, Dan? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, want to hit me again? Sure. Uh, let me find the thing. Uh, hey Dale, a question for Luke. I'm a recent software dev grad, but I feel as though I'm not skilled enough for entry-level jobs. In your experience, are graduates given some slack to learn on the job? Mm, one, imposter syndrome is a hell of a thing in the software development industry. In industry? Oh my. Uh, industry, largely because a lot of people are 
you know, learning constantly or Googling things or stack overflowing or chat GPT uh, things constantly. Um, and I think there's some insecurity around that, despite that being a thing that everyone does. Um, so don't beat yourself up too much. Uh, there is absolutely, or there should be, absolutely opportunities to learn and grow on the job for a junior uh, because there should be opportunities to learn and grow on the job for everyone in the stack, uh, including seniors. Uh, that being said, if you're being actively paid, you're going to be expected to produce something of value. Um, so it, it's not like you're just going back into school, but this time school pays you. Um, you actually have to make things that bring the company value. Um, you're just going to have, as a junior, you should have more time and opportunity to work through those problems uh, than other people may have. And you should hopefully have access to, it, it depends on where you end up working. You might be the only developer there. Um, but you, you, you may, depending on where you go, have access to seniors that you can... Um, you know, bounce questions off of, but you should try to solve it yourself first. You should take the opportunity to try to do that. And then if you get hard stuck, then you can bring it to them and see how you can move forward. Um, but, but yeah, I think that would be my answer. Don't shy away from applying. Uh, places are probably going to send you tests and things like that and do the tests. And if you don't get callbacks after the tests, don't worry about it. Just move on to the next one and keep going. Uh, you need to get in somewhere, you need to start getting some experience on your resume, and you need to start getting some experience just as a developer, as a person. So just send it. Um, don't take it too personally. Don't get too imposter syndrome -y. Uh Before you end up getting a job, um, uh, work on your portfolio if you can. Keep training, keep moving forward. We're all going to make it. Hello, WAN.DLL, long-time viewer, first-time shopper. Linus, I've noticed their increase on camera time. Have your littles expressed personal interest in content creation? How do you respond? Um, they love being in videos, but I think they specifically like being in videos with me. Like, I think they like doing what I do. They're kids, right? They, um, I, I, I'm just grateful they still think I'm cool. <laughs> as cool as I can be. Uh, they actually were in shooting a video with me today <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that um, I think is going to be just a blast. We build Luke a computer, but with a twist. I don't know how much I want to say about let's it. Let's not say too much. Okay, let's let's let the people experience it. Yeah. Um, it's a really, really fun video. I'm very excited for you guys to watch it, and I am also very excited to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be great. That's all I'll say. So... Um, as for just making videos on their own, no, I don't think they have a ton of interest in it. And I, I'm not sure if I'd even encourage it, really. I want them to, I want them, I, the more I think about it, the more I want them to find their own path. Um, I'm not, as they get older, I'm also not going to shy away from showing them as much as I have in the past. Like if they want to participate, I think that's pretty cool. We'll pay them for their work. Uh, that's something that I've talked about a lot in the past is um, content creators who seem to think that their children are their property and they can just exploit their labor and yeah. just take all the money. Never been a fan of that. It doesn't really make a ton of sense to me. But I also think that... Um, but I'm also not going to go completely the other way and just go, yeah, my, you know, my kids should never be on camera. They... Um, I, I doubt it's going to have a significant impact on their later life if they build a computer or two. Like, we have a very different kind of channel than some of the channels that do... It's not based around your kids. Yeah, do feature their children a lot, you know, experiencing milestones or doing embarrassing things or whatever else. Like, my kids, are just, like, they're building a computer. Like, what? Who cares? Like, it just... Um, I, I doubt there will be a, a ton of negative impact on on their later life from being in a video with dad on his YouTube channel at some point when they were a kid. It just seems kind of far fetched, um, and they're yeah they're uh, they're they're having a lot of fun with it, and it's it's I fun it's to do things with mix. them. Yeah, it's it's, it's been, been okay because like blocking them out completely, I think, would be weird. But having them on all the time would be weird. Yeah, they mean, show up every once in a bit. I think that's cool. I think it's it's on people to kind of find the balance that works for them. Yeah. Like, um, it also depends how much they want. Like what's inside, that. you know, talking to the dad. Uh, 
and, and actually, and, and Lincoln as well. Like they, for them, that was a, a thing they did together and they sure. bonded over and like, it's super memorable and just yeah. stuff, right? Like that's, um, like, yeah, did the family, you know, does make the some money child actually it? want to do this too? Yeah, that's huge. Because if so, then, you know, sure, run with it. But if they just hate it all the time, then, like, what are you really doing? Yeah, I'm not going to force anything. Yeah. Hello, LTT. So I've got the LT Steam Deck, and it has sticky buttons. So, Valve RMA, have you experienced sticky buttons or heard of it? Um, I haven't heard of it specifically around the Steam Deck, but uh, something that I b did want to talk about, the reason I curated this one, is that even mature devices can still have a lot of differences from one unit to the next. And one of the things that can cause uh, a plastic part to fail um, can be worn out molds. And I was just, I was just wondering, and I'm, now I'm going to wonder aloud, exactly how many Steam Decks Valve has sold? Because I can tell you right now, it's probably enough that Valve has had to remake the plastic molds for the Steam Deck possibly multiple times, which is a tens of thousands of dollars process if they want to do it onshore uh, with, a, with a high degree of quality um, to make like a really long lasting mold. Uh, that, that was it. Uh, yeah, and as the molds wear out, you can run into tolerance issues exactly like this. So I do wonder maybe if... You know, they had a worn out mold and it didn't get replaced in a timely manner or, you know, whatever else. I wonder what the differences are between the first Steam Deck and the last Steam Deck. Theoretically, you know, they, they are the same, but as it gets plastic flowed through it more, more and more and more times, they, they do change a little bit. I don't know a ton about the exact materials processes that are taking place there, but it's something that I did have to learn about with the screwdriver because we had to make a decision. Actually, it might not have been the screwdriver. It might have been something else. But at some point, we were making a decision between um, different molding materials and whether we wanted to go with the more expensive one that would last much longer or the cheaper one that would last a shorter period of time. And it comes down to how many you think you're going to sell because that cheaper material is great as long as you're only going to sell 10 or 20,000 of them. But if you're going to do hundreds of thousands, then you want to really invest in a super high quality mold, which costs a lot more because it's made out of harder materials that are not going to wear out as quickly that was it i just thought that was cool when i talk about that from what i can find the three million unit number that people are throwing around for the steam deck is a estimation i don't think valve has announced it yeah there was a research research firm omdia they reported that the steam deck sold 1.62 million units in 2022 not sure why they think they know that or not i haven't looked into the report at all uh, and then their report estimated that the Steam Deck would pass 3 million units sold um, sometime during 2023. But th that's a complete estimation, and that's not Valve necessarily saying the 1.62 million units. That's a research firm. Not sure where they got it from. It oh. might be very good information. It might not. Be. I suspect it's a lot more than that. At that price. I feel like it is too. With but that I kind of reach. No idea. There's just... We just don't know. I, the, just the number of them I see around. Like I... That is your... Yeah, I'll like put up on like on the ferry or whatever. You see them on the ferry? Yeah, I see. I've seen, I see Steam Decks in the wild, man. So it's I don't know, man. I uh, I suspect there's a lot of Steam Decks out there. I'm always pretty surprised at how many people have them. I also think it's kind of interesting that when I say I don't have them, how surprised people are because they're like, "What? I do!" Like that's very often the response that I get. Yep. Um. So yeah, they're 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 they be out there. Um. KeyPass and SyncThing was the best decision I made. What do you think about not being able to disable Google prompts? I store 2FA secrets in it because it's the most secure thing I have. I hate that. Not being able to disable Google prompts? Like it asking yeah. you to store passwords? No, no, Google prompts. That's when you go to sign into something and it's like, I just sent a notification to your phone. Just click OK or press a number or whatever. I'd like to be able to choose. Um, that's the only thing I hate about it. Overall, it seems reasonably secure-ish, as secure as anything else. I think it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I do agree, though. I would like to be able especially to Especially because it's yet another or factor. Yes. So. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about what is required to get one of the Fairphones to work on a Canadian network? I want one, but see that it doesn't come with Canadian bands when, uh, when stock 
Um, I didn't really have a ton of issues using it. I didn't set up anything special. I just used it. Um, it's possible that my particular carrier uh, uses bands that the Fairphone just supports or that my area has good coverage of the particular bands that the Fairphone does support. Your mileage may vary, but it was that was not my issue with it. By the way, I managed to get, I started carrying my iPhone in my other pocket while I was, I, I've switched off the Fairphone now. I'm back to the Note. Um, I wanted to use the OnePlus Open, but apparently Bell took it for CE. He says for CES, so he can, you know, do more planning. Like, okay. Um, anyway, mm. so I'm, I'll wait. I'll get it from him after CES. Mm. But um, Good job, Bell. Yeah, so I, I started carrying around an iPhone so that, I could, the ways. so I could record the buggy behavior from the Fairphone. Man, I've got everything from the earpiece not working on phone calls to the main speaker not working when watching videos to the brightness going like, this like high low high low high low high low in a dark room like just <sighs> it's going to be a really disappointing review that sucks yeah i'm bummed i wanted it to go well hey dll hope y'all are having a good night which companies are you most excited to see at ces i'm really excited to go to hisense apparently they made something that just shits on the tv i just bought like oh. absolutely makes it look like a, a, a clown product for jokesters. Is this going to be the new thing, like incredibly bright SDR? It apparently can do double the peak brightness. 10,000 nits. What's going on? Is there Was there like a new technology discovery or something? He's, he's checking if he can say, I think. That's well, what my guess is. What is the context for 10,000 nits? Oh, thank God. Okay, this is not proprietary secret I, information. I told you. It's like <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're wondering about what you had said already. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's not much worse. Um, 10,000 nits. You like blind? So is that a flashbang? 40,000 local dimming zones. Whoa. How so big is the TV? 110 inches. So it's a little bit smaller. But more local dimming zones. But more. So you could move a mouse wow. pointer around on this thing and get barely any blooming, as far as I can tell. Wow. Absolutely and flipping I'm wild. I'm assuming you could get it in North America without having like a Chinese phone number and all They the claim 95% of BT 2020. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you 2020? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. This thing <laughs> sounds 10, wild. 000. And then right next to them on the show floor... TCL is supposed to be there with a North American version of the thing I just got. Oh. Yeah, so. Wow. I guess I didn't need to import it. With, um, <laughs> I mean, it's a cooler story that you did that. Yeah. yeah. And like. Yours is special now. We, it was, it was worth it for the content to deal with importing yeah. it before it was available in North America. Like 100%. I, I, I'm really glad we did it. And Do it's, for the gram. Yep. Yep. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to that. I also want to see all the weird AI stuff. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> Hello, Linus. As someone who loves folding phones, do you think Apple will eventually make one? If they do, do you think it will help make folding phones go mainstream? I don't know. Apple seems almost <sighs> resistant to doing anything cool with their phones lately. <laughs> what, what have they done? It's felt very safe. Like put like more holes in it? Like I just don't really... Um, or less. Yeah, or less. I don't know, man. Like it's, uh, it almost seems like they're stuck in a rut where they recognize that what people love about the iPhone is that in six years, seven years, having not paid attention to tech at all, people can go to the store, say, my iPhone is slow. Can I have a new one? And it works exactly the same way that their old one did. Uh, like that's great from, from a, like that, that's great from a customer consistency customer experience standpoint but it's not exciting it's just boring Ugh, so boring happy new year dll luke i'm thinking of getting a budgie or two and was wondering if you had any tips or resources for me i had a uh, cockatiels growing up but uh so i have some experience with owning birds emma my my girlfriend is more knowledgeable about birds and, and the care of birds than I am. I like to think I'm no slouch in that regard, but she's she's much better studied. Um, look up, because I don't want to say it and be wrong, look up 
uh, the things that you shouldn't have or be doing near your birds or probably in your home at all. Some of that is like cooking with Teflon. Some cleaners are also included in that. Um, they are like mostly made out of air. Um, and if airborne things get into them, uh, th like, I mean, we were happy that our budgie gained weight and became 30 grams. Um, so they can, they can be completely taken out and no longer be alive very, very, very fast. Um, so you need to make sure that there aren't bad contaminants, that you're not like cooking stuff that can overwhelm them, uh, that you, there's no, people are saying no smoking in the house. They're not kidding. Um, no smoking in the house. Um, that, that can be really bad for them. Um, they're very, very fragile beings. As birds, they hide when they're sick. Um, they don't want to look like easy targets to prey. So they hide when they're sick. There's some ways that you can kind of tell, look it up. This is something you're going to need to know because again, they can die very fast. They're not super resilient. So you need to get them to a vet very quickly if something does go wrong. Um, also be very active with their environment. When you first get them, they're going to be very shy. Uh, they might hide in their little box for a long time, stuff like that, but they're very social animals. They're going to want to hang out with you, but you need to constantly poke them out of their, not actually, <laughs> not actually physically poke them. Luke um, bird tips. But you need just to shake <laughs> the cave. If they're sick, just shake the cage. Uh, but like change up their environment. Give them, give them something that they're not comfortable with yet. Um, last night, I just put a random recently cleaned so that I knew it would be safe, uh, but a random sock near their cage. Just one that they hadn't seen before so that they would be like, huh, what's that? Is it safe? Is, is it stimulation? Yeah. Keep them active. Keep them stimulated. They're, they're smart and they're very social. So keep those things rolling, spend actual time with them, um, and change up their environment and stuff so that they have to learn new things, get used to different things, um, accept different things as safe. They'll also accept things as safe faster and more easily when they're needing to do it all the time. Um, and that includes you. So if you're having a hard time socializing with them, if you're having a hard time, like getting them to land on you, stuff like that, um, get them used to getting used to things. Yeah. Anyways, I'll stop there. Hey, DLL, I've recently tried to stop shopping on Amazon, but I'm at a loss on where to find all of the things I used to shop for. How do you find storefronts for high quality, reliable products? Well, ltdstore.com. Oh, oh, me to it. it. Let's it. go. You're getting all the brownie points tonight. <laughs> oh, man. Um... <laughs> I, I just, I Google, um, I look for places that seem pretty credible. Yeah. There's easy ways to make mistakes like that. Like I yeah. almost bought, uh, badminton shoes from a site that was just fraud once. Yikes. Ugh, yeah. Um, so, you know, look for independent. I do reverse thumbnail search, by the way. That's oh, one okay. of the things that I do. Okay. Um, I try to figure out if the exact product pictures they have are from elsewhere. Sure. But if it's from the manufacturer site, that's fine. By the way, a yes. lot of smaller sites will not take their own, do their own product photography. They'll just borrow from the manufacturer. But yeah, um, one of the other things you can do is, I, I don't know, reseller ratings used to be a thing. Um, I, I haven't, I buy, reviews. I buy a lot of stuff first party these days. Yeah. Like when I bought too. the the bamboo printer, I just went to bamboo's website. Like I just, I don't. More places offer that now. Yeah. It's so it's more possible huge thing now. now. Um, I, I remember being frustrated actually quite recently because I wanted to buy something and the manufacturer didn't just sell it. And I was Amazon like, only stores are very annoying. Uh, no, it wasn't an Amazon only store. It mm. was just, I, there was just something I wanted to buy and I was on the manufacturer website and I was just like, I just want one of these. Why don't you just sell it to me? <laughs> um, like, what's your problem? <laughs> but it makes sense. Like setting up e-commerce is not easy, right? Yeah. yeah. A lot of overhead. A lot of legal issues and stuff too. Um, before I forget, uh, you mentioned you're excited to see all the weird AI things at CES. You should like keep a tally of how many of them you can like break. Oh, no, that sounds like too much work. You're an AI fridge. No, you're helping me buy a car yeah, or, or like learn how to make napalm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like that. That's often what you reference from the book because it's my favorite part. Too. My, um, my sister-in-law has a smart fridge. <laughs> which I only found out when we visited over the holiday and she actually uses it oh. like to play music in her kitchen. And oh. I was just kind of, yeah, it has a screen on the front and you can like 
load up YouTube music videos. I love the ones and her that kids, have... her kids love like watching music videos in the kitchen. I just, sorry, I just, watching it was one music of music videos in the kitchen. It was one of those product categories that I first saw at CES <laughs> twelve years ago or whatever, and I was like, well, this is f-ing stupid. This will <laughs> never be a thing that matters. And like, yeah. in my house where I realistically could have bought a smart fridge if I really wanted With to, a screen on it, I. So, that, so one, that your kids can watch music 1, videos. 1,000% kitchen. decided not to do that because it seemed like... Now it, you'll have to watch music videos on all the other screens in the house. Yeah, I... Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I've gotten completely distracted because apparently Alex Jones made a video game. Yeah. When was this? this for, was a, for your fridge? No. No. But this was a this was a bit ago, I think. Was it? If I'm thinking of the right thing. Um, no, this is this is from like two days ago. Two days ago. Oh boy. Uh, oh wow. Right. Well, good luck with that, everybody. Wow, the website is alexjonesgame.com. All right. Ah, uh, boy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Wow. wow. Should should uh, do you see the like? Um, wow. It's all reviews right now are overwhelmingly positive. Um. Yeah. Okay. So there's videos of a ton of different people playing it. So I think I've seen like thumbnails for people playing this game, which is why I knew about that. Um, I wonder if uh, they have Asmon's permission to be in their trailer. Well, they must have sent him the game. Yeah, I guess. Interesting. That uh, seems like an unlikely collaboration. There's also, I mean, there's other streamers in here too. It's not just Asmon. All right. Okay. Uh, Sure. Let's move on. Uh, how long until we can get VR headsets that are able to be true monitor replacements? I think it's a bit. Apple Vision Pro. I haven't tried that. I, it is, I don't know. The, the people who have tried it say it's amazing. I haven't tried it yet. If it's as amazing as they say, maybe it's super amazing. Otherwise, I would say we're probably a bit off. We just had kind of a big leap. And I would say maybe it's the next leap or the one after that where you can like really comfortably replace the high DPI monitor that's right on your desk. But one of uh, the issues I have with it is yeah, the comfort side of things. I don't think I would want to do that for eight hours in a day. Um, I wear headphones for eight hours a day. What if it was just as comfy? On if it's just as comfy, yeah. sure. But it's not headphones aren't on your face. Yeah, but it becomes just as comfy. But, I mean, that might be the break-even point, right? It basically needs to be just as comfy. It needs to be that comfy. Wearing headphones. Yeah. And, like, I wouldn't even want to wear these all day. I hate these. No. Yeah, these, uh, these, these suck. suck. <laughs> so, like, it's not even... Like, <laughs> headphones in general haven't just solved this. Like, so, some of them yeah. are good. Some of them are going to be better than other ones. I, I feel yeah. like I could wear my, my Sennheisers that I have at home forever, and it would never be a problem. Um, but these are, are not... These are not <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I have a headache right now. Yeah, like they're... I'm not sure if it's the Alex Jones game or these headphones. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll put that on my list. I'll get new headphones for here. Um, okay, another one for you. Uh, hey, DLL, I'm a teacher in Texas, and this year our standardized tests, uh, the written responses, both the short and the long form, will be graded by a custom-trained AI. How do y'all feel about AI as a grader? Uh, that sounds really dumb. Texas. I don't know if I need get to this elaborate on that let, more. Let me get this straight. We're concerned about the students taking shortcuts by using AI, but we're actually going to enshrine the teacher's right to take shortcuts by using AI in the in, in, in like our the worst way. The grading portion? Really? Come on. Is it going to hallucinate somebody's essay? Anyway, okay. You handed an essay on like Pony Boy or whatever. Is it Pony? No, Gold. 
Stay golden, Pony Boy. Yeah, I don't think the book is. Is it the book called? No, 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 no. But you hand in an an essay on Pony Boy. It's a good song. Um, I think it's by Sophie. I don't remember. Yeah, Outsiders. Yeah, yeah. You hand in an essay on Pony Boy from the Outsiders, uh, and it's like your essay on War and Peace. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Has Um, these various? I just hallucinated a different essay for you. I'm going to grade that one if you don't mind. I did perfect. And like, it's not going to show its work. So. How is, like, if, if a teacher has to vet it all anyways, aren't they just going to have to read the whole essay? At which point, why didn't they just grade it? Yeah, exactly. It's a book. What is... All right. AI graded him. Uh, yeah. Hey, Linus, did you hear... About City of Heroes, developer officially licensing the biggest fan server. I didn't, but that sounds super cool. Yeah, I curated this. I did not hear about this either. That sounds awesome. That sounds super sick. So yeah. what is what is officially licensing a fan server mean? I don't know. City of Heroes has been dead for a long time. Okay. Um, I'm assuming what this means is they legitimized this fan server because mm-hmm. Sony's not doing anything with this dead game anymore um so maybe you have to own a copy of the game similar to how forge alliance forever does it uh which is great fantastic solution in my opinion um i don't know i know none of the details i've never heard of this but them it 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 sounds good super cool um in other like kind of cool sounding news for a change um, this I also didn't know, but this is a, a merch message from Tony C. Uh, thoughts on Rockstar buying modding platform CFX and NCSoft giving official blessing. Oh, wait. Oh, no. This is the NCSoft thing. Uh, okay. Hold on. Rockstar buying CFX. Okay. No, I don't have thoughts on that. No, I hadn't heard about either of these things. Sorry. I've been buried under a rock this week, apparently. But the NCSoft one is super cool. Sorry. I thought I, I misread this. So the license that Sony gave the City of Heroes fan server, the fan yep. server, I saw the name for a second. I think it's called Homecoming. Yeah. Fan supported Homecoming server for, for City of Heroes receives official license from publisher NCSoft, surprising players. The license allows the admin team to continue development. My God. That's amazing. That is, ex- and this is Sony who's done this? Uh, it says, it's. I think it said Sony in what? I don't know. In what you said, but I this says know. NCSoft. Okay. That's um, kind of amazing. Yeah. NCSoft's decision to embrace the FN server, not sure what that means, um, shows a shift in sentiment, giving hope for future community content in the gaming industry. This is awesome. What should happen. This is amazing. If It's one thing if a game dies out because the developer can't maintain it anymore or whatever else and uh, no one cares fine then just let it die i guess but if the community wants it to keep going if they're sure small but dedicated enough they should be allowed to yeah i I don't know if uh someone else misspoke or if i misspoke or or what uh but yeah sony has definitely nothing to do with this well that Uh, makes more sense you did say sony that makes so much more sense okay yep sorry verbal typo it's getting late um yeah my bad all right last message 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 I think it's off being one. very cool. DLL, playing games with my kids is my favorite thing to do, and they're getting better. They're finally starting to walk straight. Linus, what are your favorite games to play with your kids? Oh, um, man, anything, anything they like. Um, you play Faf with Little Man now. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles beat em up was pretty fun to play with them. That was um, cool. Uh... I was one of Linus's kids that day. Uh, Ultimate Chicken Horse. Um, they they really like that. Just the the trolling and fun party game. Uh, one of my favorites is Takeling's House Party. Mm-hmm. It's a VR game, super niche, but it's a lot of fun, and the kids just love the silliness of it. You can't play it all the time. No, no, it's but like fantastic when you pull it out. Not very often. It's a hit every time yes. it comes out. Yeah, yeah. you want to kind of limit it though. And I think that's pretty much it for the show. Hey, thanks guys for tuning in. We'll see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. We may want to consider, I know I'm still making but we may want to consider on weeks where there is absolutely 
nothing to talk about in here for four months. I'm just having it be really Yes. Honestly, a lot. Yeah. Weird shout. Weird shout.